Hello, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. Welcome. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Oh, my God. Oh. It's been incredible. Oh, my God. I was running. I got all these balloons. You're welcome. Today is Milhall Mumbler's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Mumbler. I just got two elbows on the side of the head and a knee on the. Well, anyways, that's the things hit. I was running. <laughs> yeah. My God. Yeah. I was uh, running. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Friday night live. Yeah. Sweet welcome, guys. Studios. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Let's see who we got here. Let's start a first call. Train man, there he is. Hey, how's it going, Terrell? So great to have you. Troll is always here. I love it so much. It's so it, it, it's so nice it's to comforting. see the familiar faces. Yeah. Ian is here. Bottle caps. Hi. Fit fashion. Fit fashion is a rock. I want. I want to show. Uh, fit fashion is. Is the rocks. Oh, fit fashion. I star rocks. That's cool. I love the name. That really makes me work for it. This does it. We're glad to have you, <laughs> Lawrence Hurt, Ken Master, Train Man. Thank you. You're right here, morning our chat. Yep. Uh, perfect. Oh, you gotta do the what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up? Um, no, I can't. No, I can't get into character anymore. We're gonna get like copyright striked on this very serious something. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <Good job. laughs> oh, Gregory yeah. is here too. Yeah. Hi and hello. So nice to see you, Pamela Gonzalez. Uh, uh, yeah, happy birthday, yeah. Mud, mud Mowers. Yes, birthday today. It's uh, a big day for his birthday. It's always a big day. Yeah. Here's my friend. I know it's water, but we don't know that. Well. I, I was waiting for bottle caps to say something about my haircut. I, I noticed there was a um, uh, train man that I mentioned before, but I was waiting for bottle caps. He looks 20 years younger with a haircut. Thank you so much. See, see? That's, good. That's good. I said exactly the same thing. And so did my mother. So join And I didn't tell him <laughs> yeah. to tell you that, by the way. Yeah. No, I don't believe you, but anyways. Well, I didn't. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know where it comes from. Bottle cap is pretty... Uh, Bottle, bottle cap gets what he wants. He showed us that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we are chilling out. It's Friday. We're in. 
Mm -hmm. We're celebrating birthday without the birthday boy. Mm -hmm. We are um, chatting with you guys. Yeah. And today uh, we have a live mic show. Yep. What that means? Can you explain? <laughs> What is going on with you tonight? It's Friday. Oh. It's Friday night. <laughs> oh my. What are we to do now? <laughs> it's so funny. And you might think this is for the camera, but please believe me, for the love of all gods, it's not. <laughs> if the, you guys weren't here right now, this would we'd probably be sitting the same way we are right now, staring at the computer the same way we are now. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's not confuse Okay, the yeah. Uh, uh, okay, open mic night. So, guys, tonight's your night to talk. Uh, does anybody feel like uh, coming on for a little bit? Talk a little bit about themselves, discuss something, discuss YouTube. Uh, let's keep the topics non-confrontational if all possible, which, I mean, you guys are all pretty good at doing anyways. Uh, yeah, just uh, drop a message here if you want to be on. It yep. uh, can be a short or as long, can be for five minutes, can just uh, be dropping by and saying hi. Yep. And uh, basically, anything goes. It's just chatting. So, yeah, it's an it's a easy. I figured we'd try that for a Friday day. night. Everybody's had a long week, everybody's been really busy. Yeah, so, we've been busy too. Yeah. What did we do this week? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> it, it really is starting. We have the calendar like literally pretty filled up for next week. Yeah, next week is going to be really busy too, even busier than uh, last week. It's going to be so amazing. Starting off with the Manic Monday uh, music uh, panel that we are going to have. A couple amazing guests um, talking all and everything about music. you got to be there. And uh, we have a whole lot of guests for next week oh my god whole different subjects you don't want to miss any of that too yeah we're filled next week it's gonna be cool i love it i love it uh, i love it when it's busy yeah i love to get to know you guys to talk to chat that's so amazing bottle cups has anybody been watching uh bbc world news uh no Why? no What's what going happened on? What happened? Almost worried to ask sometimes at this point because you never know. Yeah. But um, there's always something bad. Oh, about the Cold War is back by any chance? Well, that has been back for a couple of years. Yeah, already. it's it's already it's already been there. Yeah. About submarines going the UK submarines is that what you're talking about? Uh, mm. Yeah, well, that's just part of it. If it's something else, then uh, maybe you can mention it. Uh, I'll come on. Yeah. You need five minutes to set up. Perfect. Yes. Great sure. news coming on. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Ian Boucher, no, sorry, been watching Pusha Studios. <laughs> now, how amazing of an answer is that? Where is your harmonica? The harmonica I have never played, and I don't. Oh, I've tried it, and you guys would definitely not be on, be on with me playing it. But we do have a gentleman, like I said, that I had invited. I hope he comes. That does play the harmonica, harmonica on Monday. Uh, bottle caps, don't ask. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> we are nowhere yeah. clearer. But uh, we'll get Playing to know. Games with us. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. We are. Someone got a haircut. Yeah, Rosario and Buck, yeah. Yeah, well, I th I first of all, I thought that uh, Bible Cups was talking about that, you know, like about your haircut. I went and got my haircut. It's breaking news. <laughs> oh. huh? Drop a comment below. How do you like this new haircut? And there is no beard. Where is it? As our daughter asked, where did you leave your beard? Yeah. I like it. I like it. I actually, I do like beards, so I like that there is a beard. She's trying to be nice because she was disappointed when I shaved it all off. So let's just call it for no, one. No, you didn't shave it all off. Yeah. I would be disappointed if you would have shaved it all off. Yeah. Then I would be like disappointed. But there is something there. And it's growing. I love it. I don't want to lose all my white. So no, it's I like want. wine. So. Yeah. 
<laughs> Depends where the wine was stored. Oh, uh, Saline Scott. Yeah, you're the guy that plays some. I'm sorry. There's so many people the last couple weeks, especially this last round of getting to know people has been a little more confusing just because we're already kind of burnt out from the run we did trying to get to where the channel is now and then taking on live streams. Like, you guys don't understand just how tired, tired, tired we all feel right now. Xenia and I, this has been a long run. And I mean, I love it. I love being with you guys. There's no regret or nothing. But yeah, it's a lot, oh, sorry, it's a lot of late nights. And a lot of long days, and especially when you have kids, you're up early in the morning, so it's not like we can sleep till noon and get going. Uh, yeah, I have a little one that wakes me up, uh, and, and she sleeps well, yeah. but uh, she wakes me up oh at my five God. when she's Excuse ready. Me. When she's ready to get up, and uh, yeah, so there's no sleeping after that. Yeah, because the eyes are getting opened one by one to make sure that I'm not sleeping. <laughs> so she stares in you to see if she can see your yeah. soul or something. Mommy, are you sleeping? Well, not anymore, right? So, but that's that's all part of it. So, um, <laughs> thank you, Philip Cockrum. You're not the first one that says it tonight. I think you guys are from Canada. You know what it's like. You gotta have your grizzly man winters. <laughs> That's that how I roll good. as well. Thank yeah, you. brother Dunn. Oh my God! You talk about going to my head. Ah, <laughs> uh, you guys have been working hard these last few weeks. Yes, yeah, and uh, mm. don't forget we still have business that we're running as well, and all behind behind the scenes of that. So. Yeah, exactly. We're not complaining, looking for pity or anything. Oh, it's no. Just, it's just it's a been long fun, ride. but tired. It's like uh, when you go to the gym and then you feel that good, good tired, but you're still tired, right? Uh, yep. uh So that's kind of what we are. Yeah, Gregory, right just uh, give me a couple of moments and I'll send it off to you on Twitter. Not a problem. Uh, yeah, uh, yesterday. Oh. By the way, you were on today on the live stream too. Yeah, I was on. Tell, tell yeah. me about it. I wasn't there. Tell me what you did. I went on the stream. Okay, and what did you do? Talked. Uh, tell people who don't know where you were and what did you do, and tell me too. I went to James Cox's stream and I talked. Okay. <laughs> he had an <laughs> he had an impromptu one. Okay. And uh, so yeah, I went on and it was. It was good. It was good. Bobby Sidhu, don't run away so fast tonight. <laughs> Hi, Arvind, the paid tourist. Let's yes. get Mother Nature finger off. Yes. Figure out the snow off button and shut down in Wyoming. They shut down the interstate. Yeah, it's coming know. here too. Apparently, uh, we were supposed to have uh, to be in the center of it too by Sunday, uh, but it looks like we're going to catch the, just the tail end of it and uh ontario is gonna catch it kingston and my, barry and toronto we were on with my parents tonight and my mother who's not exactly the most tech savvy actually found a way to get her laptop up that she could show us outside the window and walk us around and i mean literally eastern quebec like we have no snow here we get hit with some snow shots but we haven't had any for probably two weeks or more three weeks that's pretty much all gone yeah, they still have winter wonderland. So yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Four feet of it. I mean, uh, I can't even wrap my head around what you're showing me. And New York had plus twenty two today, so it's uh, it's quite a quite a difference. But it's coming. Uh, it's coming. The geese are there. And the flowers are starting. Uh, Gregor, Lisa, Gregor, can you send later, me a Twitter? Oh, come back, Saline Scott. Don't go away. Gregory, can you? Uh, thank you. <laughs> I was trying to get through. Gregory, can you send me a message on Twitter, please? And I'll give you the link. And also, if there's anybody else wants to come on, we'll see what kind of... We haven't had it done the panel yet, eh? We've never had more than No, one. we never had a panel. And also, as, yeah. as we said, it's going to be a short or as long. And yeah. jump in, jump off. It's uh, uh, very unstruct unstructed. Yep, that's right. So yeah, it just uh, tonight just going to be a, a chill night, a hang-in night. Uh we're not clubbing, we're just chilling. <laughs> we're glad for Friday, though. Yeah. 
This has been a long week. This has been a very interesting week. I have been mixing dates and days all the time. Uh, all this week and yeah. last week. It's just all feels like a different day every day. Yesterday, the corn line... I, I finally got my, my day straight yesterday. Yesterday was Thursday. Yesterday was Thursday, I kept telling myself. And then I went... And I watched the uh, Corn Life Network uh, Lemon Challenge that they did um, right before our stream yesterday. So I went after our stream and then watched it. And um, in his announcement of their live stream, he's saying, Friday, it's Friday. We're doing a live stream on Friday. <laughs> and I got completely confused. So uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Bobby Sidhu. <laughs> yeah uh so so yeah that that was quite uh, confusing all week hopefully next week is not gonna be like that but that's okay it feels like thursday today it feels like thursday it does it does oh rubber vent long uh long bows uh i just want to say hi movie night and pizza with the family so peace out pizza sounds good yeah you guys have a great night thank you so much for just coming in to say hi that's uh You've been a really great supporter this week, by the way. I really do appreciate you. Enjoy that pizza and enjoy the time with the family. Yeah, don't forget about to come back on Monday, Manic Monday Music Night, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be fun. It's going to be lots of fun. Whoa, 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 whoa. stop for a sec. You're fooling around, uh, James. I just want to let you you all know that I have just welcomed Casey Neistat and Peter McKenna into the IMAC well, community. Hello. Hey! Hi. How you guys doing tonight? Not too bad oh, yourself. Good, good. Oh, pretty good. Welcome. Uh, it's so nice to have you. Yeah, it's nice to be here. You're one of those guys. You're kind of like us. We get called in the last minute or jumps to the gate. I love that. It's, it's nice <laughs> to have. We still want to yeah, have you yeah. more officially sometime, but this is really nice. So yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? When I'm when I have some free time, I. Uh, I actually go on to the live streams and I look for them and I go on and uh, I just do a search for hashtag I am a creator and then I go to the filters and I go to live streams and I see who's on. Excellent. If there's a bunch of people in there, I go in. Well, why not? Uh, hey, any any coverage is good coverage. Any new people you get to meet. Exactly. Just hang out together and yeah. stuff. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this community is great. I mean, it, it's just uh, so diverse in how people use it and what they do with it. That's so cool. How was your week? Yeah. So what's going on with you and your channel? You've been really pushing. Uh, I've been pushing really hard. And, uh, well, this weekend starts up uh, car shows again. So I have a car show tomorrow. It's going to be nice in my area. So um, that'll be the start of the car show season. So I'll get a chance. I'm driving to Reading, Pennsylvania to be in a car show. Excellent. Um, this, uh, Yeah, my channel has grown in the past three weeks, it's been about a hundred and about 170 now in three weeks. That's amazing. And my goal is by Sunday to have 650 because that is my dream, the horsepower of my dream car. Oh, that's not cool. I like that. Yeah, I like how you guys come up with creative ideas and that. I'm just showing your side uh, the 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 homepage of your uh, channel right now. And guys, if you haven't checked him out yet, please do. He's got a really great channel. Yeah, my channel does a lot of, it, it's all centered around cars um, and a lot of different things. You know, five things I hate about car dealers, five things I hate about the Camaro. Uh, <laughs> I do some 360 videos in my car. I have, I've had a camera for about two years and I've been starting to play with it finally um, with the channel. Um, and I'm getting ready to start up a new channel called the Wedding 911, which helps couples um, plan their wedding. Oh, wow, that's interesting. We definitely would like yeah. to know more about that. We yeah. uh, dipped our toes hey. and fingers in that uh, business part as well. Um, yeah, we had a small business after we got married in Iceland. We started <laughs> doing weddings in Iceland for people, like yeah. contracting, planning, yeah. and uh, all that. So that's yeah. something. Oh. So, so you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, the, the channel's up. It's live. It's called The Wedding 911. And right now there's a channel intro on there. That's the only video. I've actually got uh, four videos already recorded. I have 14 scripted. Wow. But um, basically the channel is going to be based around giving advice to uh, couples about their 
um, wedding and not even, not even their wedding, but like the first, the, one of the first topics is, you know, should I even get married? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and that's it, a good know, topic. It, it really is something that isn't covered enough. We're joking, but that's true. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, you know, the big thing, you know, I mean, I'm a wedding photographer like you guys. And the big thing you hear is you'll hear couples in their when you're meeting with them and they'll be like, well, you know, we, we there'll, there'll be some comment about the 50 percent divorce ratio. Yeah. Oftentimes. Yes, you're right. The thing is, is that what people don't understand is that 50 percent divorce ratio is not true. Yes. 100%. It's and and the ratio is actually 50% of marriage of all marriages. Yeah. However, first time marriages it's 30%. Yes. The 50% and then second time marriage is like 60% and third time marriages are like 70%. Yeah, well. <laughs> so that's that's kind of where the that 50% comes from, but even beyond that the divorce rate of married couples that are college educated over the age of 25, it dips all the way down to 20. Really? Hmm. That's a very interesting statistic. Yeah, that one was. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've heard the other numbers before, it roughly, like, you know, I couldn't. But yeah, that's the first time hearing that one. That's very interesting. Yeah, so the channel's going to be based around that. It's going to be based around, you know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of things like, oh, um, the wedding venues, they, they try to rob you because you're having a wedding. And I'm like, no, they're not. They have, you know, they're, they're like, uh, you know, you compare that to a restaurant that operates, um, you know, five to seven nights a week versus one day a week. Right. And then you take into account that that restaurant turns those tables usually two to three times a night. Mm -hmm. And you start taking these numbers and it starts to explain why it is what it is. And, you know, I know a lot of couples, they'll, they're engaged and they're already planning the wedding. And it's like, this is not the time to plan the wedding. You, you need to enjoy being engaged. Yes. How true is that one? I think a lot of people, and my assumption, so correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, especially women uh, are so um, overwhelmed with planning the wedding. They have, some of them planned it since they were, you know, little age and, and had scrapbooks and all that and, and imagine how their wedding is going to be. So when they finally have that, OK, we're go we're going to get married. And then it's like this click and they get all overwhelmed with planning the details. You know, everything gets about planning. Uh -huh. So uh, in that time, the year, let's say the average uh, bigger wedding gets planned, uh, they uh, I think as a couple grow apart more because yeah. she's so busy with that and, and kind of most lots of the times men are not as as involved as so all that starting to change and then by the end of all that you kind of they're tired they're exhausted they they are at the event that they planned for the whole uh year spend so much money at and they can't even fully enjoy it uh -huh. because of that yeah well the um my motto for the channel is is that your your wedding will never be perfect but planned properly it can be a day of perfect moments mm. mm -hmm. so, yeah that's a very good that, way of good, saying yeah. it I like yeah, that. I, i've met so many brides that get upset over the littlest thing and i'm just like look it, it, it's gonna be fine it's not a big deal um, you know, we're going to move on from this, you know, we're going to do this. And, you know, I always take them when it's time for the formal pictures, I always take the couple away and I try to kind of be just a, a fly on the wall, taking pictures from a distance and let them have some time to enjoy themselves. Usually I'll tell them at some point, I just want you to walk down this path, enjoy each other's company for, you know, till you get down to the end and I'm going to be here. I'm going to take some pictures. I may jump around and take the other picture, you know, from the other angle or whatever. Don't worry about me. I don't even want you looking at me. Just talk to each other. And they love that time. Yes, mm. I agree. And I have, uh, we have a very similar approach too. I try to uh, blend <clears throat> into the, the scene, so to say, and uh, not uh, change the, the event you know because i think there are different types of photographers and and videographers as well and and there are there are types that are um, like more guiding the couple and the events themselves almost but i find that um i don't want to 
I don't want to be the essential part of it. I'm, I'm there to capture their event, not to be a part of it, right? So the less uh, in, intervention or their less effect of my work is there directly on their event, the better. So I agree. I like I, a lot of times that's exactly it. And that's why I like a lot of times using uh, a zoom lens, for example, for a close up uh, portraits, because people don't even notice that the, their picture is taken, <coughs> right? And you can catch so amazing details and face expressions. Because um, when people think that they're not uh, you know, photographed or videographed, that's when they relax the most. That's where the, yeah. the, the most kind of pictures come out of. Uh, so I agree that it's, it, I, I think that that's the best way of doing uh, weddings is to, to be like observer, uh, not like as a central part. Of. I, I personally am, I'm, I'm very much involved in the wedding. Um, it just the way my clients are. A lot of my clients don't have wedding planners. They, they don't really get into it at all with any kind of wedding planner. And I end up taking that role and I actually start directing the day because a lot of, a lot of my clients, they, they say they want photojournalistic pictures, but when they start picking out the pictures that they, you know, cause I'll ask them, what were the pictures that you liked the most that I took? for my website and stuff. And when they point them out, I'll be like, see, that's the, the, you don't want a photojournalistic pictures. You want it to look like it was photojournalistic. My pictures are very much involved in, in telling them what to do, but in a natural way. So it might be, okay, I want you to gaze into her eyes and that'll be very natural versus turn your head five degrees and look right at her, you yeah. know, and that type of where it's very, very stiff and posed. Um, but that, my particular style does actually go in there and you know those are all some of the topics that i'm covering and i'm actually doing it in a way like um the first week is is you got married now what so it's it's all about you need to you know you're not planning your wedding plan an engagement party if you want to plan something you know uh you need to get a budget you need to find out how many people realistically are going to be there yes. um, think before you start planning and but I'm taking one topic every week to start, and there's actually three ep around three episodes per topic, with the last episode being called the Devil's Advocate. So like it'll be something like um, for the venue, it'll be like okay, like if you can't do a venue, if you can't afford a hundred plus dollars a plate, um, you know, some options such as a brunch having a Sunday morning uh, ceremony or Sunday, like, you know, after the last mass kind of thing. And then in the church hall, having pastries um, exactly. or, you know, some of the things are, it even it will address questions of, you know, back in the day, marriage was something the parents gave to the kids. So they had a, a, a pool of money to have to get started buy a house and things like that. But with uh, today's then, venture where the couples are actually paying for half to most, you know, you got to kind of think, you know, if it's going to cost me $30,000 to do a wedding and, you know, the average gifts are going to give us $20,000. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to, we're going to address those topics that nobody talks about the things you're not supposed to, to bring up. The taboos, we'll say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it is something to cover. I mean, we've talked about that. We were actually just showing. I don't know if you've seen in the clips. We were showing our wedding. Yeah, it was. And um, see, uh, my first marriage was a big wedding. Everything paid. And you know what? It never really brought me any happiness. The proof was in the pudding. <laughs> and that's why this time, and unfortunately, Xenia's mom and grandmother had just passed away the year before. So Xenia was still young. She didn't have any direct family. Her dad was gone and stuff. So why have a big wedding for somebody to feel, you know, uneven? Not that she complained. She's very close in my family. It was actually me more saying that if I ever got married again, I didn't want to do things the old way. Yeah. And instead of putting a bunch of money into what it made everybody else happy, for us it was like, well, let's put money into something that will actually make us feel good. And that's why we went this road. And I like that today that weddings are getting a little more adventurous. It's nice to see people. I mean, not we went one way, not everybody else goes that way, but they can do it with 10 people or 20 people or even sometimes with 60 people. Some people come up with very creative ways to do it without going broke. 
Because that's what I could never understand was this, you got to spend every penny you can beg, steal, and borrow for, for one day. That, that yeah. was, maybe I'm just cheap, but that was something I was always kind of rooting against, like it's finding new ways to do things on the, without going, like I say, broke. I, yeah, I, I mean, think, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, my, my whole adventure, I mean, where where I look at people who my direct competitors, the people that I feel are at the same level of experience and, and knowledge and um, finality of, of wedding photography in my area, I am like more than half the price less. <laughs> you know, I, I, I go in there. I'm like, I, how can I do this? Like I offer a package where, you know what, if you want me to come and take pictures and give them to you, it's 40, it's about 40 hours worth of work. Mm -hmm. And okay. So my, my package is for me to do that, to come for the day plus all the beginning, you know, before and after I only charge a thousand dollars and you know, you can get that. But if you want everything, you know, uh, the engagement, the book, the, I actually have um, little, they're basically business card size things, but it's a picture of them from their engagement or a bridal gown shoot. Yeah. Um, yeah and then I put that for, as a favor for everybody, you know, and then that, that jumps significantly on top of that, but it's, it, it, it's a way for me to, you know, say, and you know what, I'll tell you what, it doesn't work. People sit there and they go, Oh, he's only a thousand dollars. He's not very good. Huh? It's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you because oftentimes, it, yeah. uh, I think uh, it's very hard for mm -hmm. uh, photo and videographers to price their work. Right. Because it's such a like a big range in, in an area usually uh, for the same type of, kind of same type of work yeah. so when when it happens that you are like you were saying like you were half less price than uh the most of uh, photographers in your area you must have these questions like why are you cheaper like what what is it yeah what's the catch do, do, yeah. do you get these questions like what's the catch well, why so cheap? there i have had some of that but at this point what happened with me was is i started my business in 2009 and the reason i started was is that i had a third couple ask me to shoot their wedding now i went to school for graphic design um part of that was you had to take photography uh -huh. um but i never had the um uh, like I always would like to have been a photographer, but what I didn't want to do was take the time to learn to be a photographer because it was expensive, you know, film yeah. and getting it developed and writing everything down. I didn't want to do all that. So I never would do photography. It was just for fun. And, um, I would have I, my third wedding, my third couple asked me to shoot their wedding. And I'm like, no, I don't have the equipment. I don't have the ability. I'm not, you know, that you need to hire a professional. And they're like, no, 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 no. Eventually it would get to, we'll pay you. Yeah. I'm like, the last thing I want is to be paid. <laughs> Cause when you don't like your pictures, yeah. I don't want you coming back to me. <laughs> so I would tell eventually I would say I would fight with them for at least weeks, you know, at least like three or four times. And then I would say, look, if you want me to really do it, if you really want me to do it, if you're not going to go hire somebody, I'll do it for you. But it's my wedding gift to you. Mm -hmm. And when you don't like the pictures, remember, you got what you paid for. Yeah. And that's what I would tell them flat out. All I had was a 35 millimeter camera, a little rebel and like a digital point and shoot. And that's all I had. Um, but by the third one, um, same same scenario, but I was working in insurance and I was getting a $1,500 bonus coming up. So I, I talked to my wife. I said, you know, if we have all these people asking me without the business, why don't we just open the business? So I went out and I bought a digital DSLR. I bought a uh, off-camera flash and all the stuff you need to get started. And I shot their wedding and I opened a business, did a website and I grew, you know, my next wedding, I bought a used Canon 1D. I bought a new lens and I just kept upgrading. Um, and everything was going great. And all of a sudden I got a job offer from a nationwide um, studio that went to churches and did basically a church yearbook. Mm. And I'm talking to them and they said, oh, you'll make like 
when I when they the way they phrase, I'm like, okay, I should make between fifty and seventy thousand a year. That sounds good. I shut down my business and I went to work for them. I don't think I made twenty, mm-hmm. and I was like, the you know, this is the I, I just left. Right. Um, I did, but I did do it for about fourteen months, and when I came back, um, to my area and I reopened, there was like ten photographers a year ago now there were i counted them because i couldn't figure out why i wasn't just kind of catching back one and i sat there in google maps and went there's 33 a year later mm. and now i only work by word of mouth i refuse to go out and try and get business i don't go to bridal shows i don't advertise it is just strictly my website and word of mouth and i only do a couple a year but i'm happy with that well that's good and that's the nice thing about that. Like, not everybody has to go down that road. You're you're finding what works for you. You feel comfortable in there, and I think that's quite amazing, to be honest. And also, I think uh, like uh, the promotional part of it, oftentimes uh, comes uh, in in a way of actual work. And and, and like we are yeah. not just the wedding um, no. photo and video. We do corporate. Uh, we do corporate, other. Ways. So as well. So therefore, we got to promote it as well. And I find, especially with all the social media and algorithms, and not just YouTube, but YouTube is less yeah. our business part than any of the other places, but like Instagram and Facebook and, you know, all that takes such a long time. And oftentimes I find like uh, out of the week, I sometimes do more of that than I do actual Big photography. And, and then I ask myself, well, I wanted to do photography, yeah. <laughs> not 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 coordination of social media, right? But then at the same time, like you gotta kind of like weigh out. Well, if, you know, like if you do uh, weddings only or only family portraits, mm-hmm. then I guess it's easier uh, to do it uh, from mouth to mouth. But when it starts, starts to get into the corporate, and then we gotta do it. But I oftentimes wish we would be doing just photography or video. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of my thing is like, I'm just tired of, you know, and I, I, the, the quality of work that's around me and for the same price and everything else. And I just sit there and go, you know, I'd have couples that would, would kind of look at my work and go, oh, we looked at so-and-so and I know that their work is not, you know, they're not using top end lenses. They're not using you know, fast lenses. I know what those people are using. I know they don't have backup equipment. I know what their quality is like. And I've seen their work and I'm just sitting there like shaking my head. Like, you know, I'm not, I I would tell them I've, I've gone to people and they would try and like, Oh, well this person and that person, I'm like, look, if you, if you think that their work is great, then you should go with them. And that I, you know, but, and then I've also had it on the other side where I had people come to me and say, Uh, can you shoot it like this? And I say, well, why don't you just hire them if you like their, well, they were too expensive. I said, one reason. (laughs) 100%. And that's also, I find too, is when you're talking about price, well, I meant to mention that one thing that's really hard now is the advent of decent cell phones because you get so many of them that want these award-winning videos, especially photography too. But as soon as you mention any price, it's like, well, my uncle does some neat things on my on his S9. And that's an awful thing to try and contend with. And it's like, well, get your uncle with his S9 and take a couple of shots and see what you think of them when they're all said and done. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't do S9s, and you're not going to get what we do on an S9. I'm not knocking cell phones before anybody freaks out. They take great, lovely pictures. Right. And I'll, I'll tell you what. The past two years, all of my brides have elected for a um, unplugged wedding. Mm-hmm. However, they it, they don't do a successful job at dealing with it. Yeah, um, it's just a sign, you know. Or yeah. I had one where the pastor, the officiant, was so late, and then they didn't make their announcement. And it's mm-hmm. like, and I, I show them. I go there on Google, and I say you know, this is what an unplugged wedding is. And, you know, the sample photos with everybody holding up their, you know, it's down the aisle and everybody's got their iPhone out in the aisle trying to take the same picture. And I'm like, you know what? You're paying a lot of money for me to be there. Um, Do you want my picture? Do you want theirs? Exactly. Well, that's what it comes down to. And it's great. They say they want it unplugged and they they generally do inside. They're not lying. The problem is, is once they get there, they're worried about the wedding. They have all these things going on. And they don't want to upset Uncle Tom. And, you know, we can't say anything to Aunt Catherine because she'll get hurt. And so on and so forth. And it never goes through. 
That sounds yeah. great if you have a coordinator there that's like literally telling people like enough. Okay, it's got to stop. But they don't see it that way. And even if you do try half the time, they're trying to stop because they don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> In the end, it's your family there, and that's hard to sit and go against. I mm -hmm. let the uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Aunt Betty or Uncle Tom take their picture or whoever is there, and, and then when they're done, okay, ask if everybody's done, and then we take the picture. Yeah, because exactly. Otherwise, yeah, I, I kind of do that as well. I tell um, I tell the bride and groom, I sit with down with them about a month before the wedding, and we work out the timeline. I tell them, I said, look, I don't care either way. I said, I'll, I'll work with your family to take pictures during the formal pictures or not. Mm -hmm. but if you want them there and if you're going to allow them to be there then you're not going to get as many pictures from me we're going to run out of time mm -hmm. yeah exactly. um, and that's the way it is yep and most of the time and, and i'll give them solutions on how to get rid of them um you know if it's at the church or whatever you know it's like okay we're gonna go out i've literally there was one couple who was worried about somebody we went out, got into the car, drove around the block, and came back <laughs> just so we didn't have anybody. Um, <laughs> but a lot of times it'll be, oh, we're going to a different location or we're going to um, – uh, I've done – like golf courses are great when the whole thing's there because then you just take the golf carts and I take the bride and groom off and there we go and it's just the three of us. That's very smart kidnapping we call that yeah. <laughs> yeah i've kidnapped a few couples yeah uh, we also do that with rooms sometimes like you know people will be gathering in the main room or wherever and we'll just kind of sneak away with them and get them into like behind this older shed somewhere or anything just yeah. to get a couple, even if it's five minutes with them you can do a lot of work under the gun if need be yeah uh, do you uh more often do a couple shoot after the official part or do you tend to do them before as well I try to I try to talk them into doing it beforehand. Um, it doesn't always work. A lot of them are no, they can't. He can't see me and yeah. stuff like that. And we just, yeah. you know, I, I basically, and I, I tell them, I said, look, if it depends on what you want. If you want the storybook style, that's a before. You know, yeah. I've kidnapped couples. It's like I, I I'll make. I had one couple. Um, I did a sunset photo between these two trees on a golf course up at the top of the hill. It was a gorgeous shot. And um, they wanted this. We had talked about it beforehand. And basically, I made friends with the DJ when I got there. I'm like, look, we're trying to do this, you know. And it came up right in the middle of introductions and dancing, uh, you know, the first dance and all that stuff and the toasts and stuff. And I think I don't remember what the part was. But I was standing next to him like, okay, look, we're going to take this time. So I need you to just stall for like 15 minutes. <laughs> oh I don't remember what he did, but I grabbed the couple. We drove the golf carts up to the top of the hill. I snapped off a, a, maybe two dozen photos and then got them back in and continued the, the wedding. And it was, it's one of the best shots that I, I would say I've ever taken. DJs uh, oftentimes yeah. the best friend. We're I always. I don't think there's a photographer that doesn't <laughs> kiss up to a DJ. They're yeah. holding your bags. They're plugging. Yeah. You don't know, charge your batteries. They're, they're they're choreographing with you. They're yeah. The first person we get to know at the venue usually <laughs> after the couple, obviously, uh, is uh, is a DJ for sure in in any place. <laughs> that was I was laugh, almost laughed the moment you said it. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they are. I mean, they are kind of the nucleus of what we do. Mm -hmm. For most of that event after the after the ceremony itself, yeah, I, and I usually I usually meet with the couples a month in advance because I try to meet them before everybody else. Mm -hmm. Everybody they meet everybody else because the D, the you know the DJ most DJs can run the the reception and but it's the photographer that's there the whole day. Okay. So like I want to you know I I learned early that you know it's like wait. You want to do pictures in an hour, but you want to do them 15 minutes away. Or you want to do pictures, but you want family and friends and you want all these people. And it's like, it doesn't work. You're, you're cutting my time. So now I actually go, what time's the ceremony? And then I work backwards and I get the schedule for the day. And then I work forward and I, I hit all the numbers and everything um, because 
I've literally, I, I've seen so many venues that try to rush brides through their night and that drives me nuts. Yeah. Literally the last wedding I shot was for a friend and uh, the DJ and I are sitting at our table eating. I, no, we were out there. Anyway, what, what happened was is that the cake was supposed to be cut at, let's just say, 7 o'clock uh, at 6.30. And they had a small cake and then a kitchen cake. They had a couple's cake and a kitchen cake. The kitchen cake was already cut and out on the table a half hour before we even cut the cake. No. Oh. Oh my god <laughs> so needless to say that's the type of place that i will not be contacting for my channel like because that's one of the things is i'll be interviewing venues and stuff and right. people like that i i can't stand that i hate that they're there they are they bought a block of time exactly. don't rush it on them exactly i agree and i and i also like what you were saying about planning the time and and uh being like the guide for the uh, time planning for the day, even if they have the wedding planner, oftentimes they don't take into account all the time that is needed for the shoots before, after family and all that, yeah. and, and plan things right after another, rushing them through as well. So uh, yes, uh, oftentimes one of the first things as well we do is I, I sure. send out the a request like do you, have you met with any of your vendors or you know do you have times and if you don't then i quietly say yay yeah, <laughs> exactly <laughs> know i'll have time for what she needs you know they need to be done instead of trying to squeeze it in or cut it off from something you know so mm. that's that's a great approach uh, for sure definitely Sorry, don't mind me. I'm just back and forth between the computer and you guys, but I am listening. And <laughs> Zinia uh, does all that stuff anyway. So she's, I, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have noticed also that we had a couple of uh, people in the chat that uh, have been doing uh, wedding photos and photos yeah, in so general. Yeah, so surprised for many. Of course, uh, interesting uh, question, though, uh, that I'm thinking sometimes. ABJ, ATJH Travel uh, was saying that they take a lot of photos, then give the couple the SD card as well as a few prints. What is your uh, approach of product, so to say? I, well, it, well, first of all, my my take on that is is that if you're giving the SD card, you're either a giving raw. See, I, I think that a wedding should be shot in raw. Mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah. think any it should never yeah. not be shot in raw. It's okay. too important of an event. Number yeah. one. Number two. Um, okay, well, let me give you an example. My sister got married two two years ago, almost two years ago. And I said, when she told me she was getting me, I said, congratulations, there's no way I'm shooting your wedding. <laughs> yeah, you can't be a guest and a photographer at the same time. No. Yeah, so um, anyway, I told her I would help her find somebody. I told her all she had to do was get a package where she got the pictures and, you know, I'd help her make the book and everything. So... I gave, and I also gave her some, a few people that I said, these are the people that you contact. And she did pick one of them. I didn't get involved in any of the, the negotiating or any of that stuff. I just said, yes, she's a good person. You can go to her. When she got her pictures back, she got back 1500 pictures. Nobody can go through and 1500. They were, they were already gone through, you know, they, they deleted the, the bad, the eyes closed and those right. types of things. Yeah, they were cool through, yeah. Nobody can go through no, no average person can go through 1500 pictures. And so if you're given the SD card, you're not taking out the bad ones. You are giving them raw, which they can't view uh -huh. your, or you, you should be giving them the raw photos, but you're also not putting your signature on it. And in the end, here's the other thing is like that, that, that photographer gave my sister 1500 pictures. She could, and you know, it was mediocre. I've seen her work. Her work's very good, but it was 1500 pictures. I felt that it was mediocre. She could have cut that down to about 800 and had a spectacular because you wouldn't have seen the ones that were so, so. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So you know whatever your your business model is i would say you you i don't ever give more than 800 photos mm -hmm. i mean i i've had people come back to me and say oh i gave you you know you i i think you took more than this yeah i did well i want those I said, they're gone they're mm -hmm. not 
you know, they're, they're, they weren't good. They, there were blinks, there were whatever. I said, they're gone. They're deleted. They're, they're not available. Yeah, um, exactly. Because oftentimes they ask, well, where was, you know, I remember we took this picture or that mm -hmm, picture. Yep. And then I oftentimes say, well, uh, I gave you the pictures where I think you trusted me that you look the best that you can, you know, uh, and, right. and they are fine with that because, right, they otherwise, I, like, I was surprised ATJH uh, seeing that. And yes, there are different business models. I just was surprised uh, about SD card. I know lots of uh, people just uh, give like all pictures, so to say, but uh, it's still called true. SD yeah. card is as raw as raw it can get. So uh, I would like to know more about the feedback afterwards. The so, only time I did something yeah. like that was um, I would work for a company called The Pros, which is a horrible 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 business model you should stay away from um where basically they were a marketing company that employed photographers and djs and and everybody else and you know my my point was is like or the reason i joined them was I, I was thinking okay well uh i don't have any this month so i'll tell them i'm available this month but they want to book you a year in advance and it was just a and they paid you next to nothing but when I did those, I was getting paid very, very little. I was getting to go with my own equipment, shoot and upload it to them. And when I did that, I would actually delete the photos throughout the day. Definitely. That's a very good point yeah. right there. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, and that's, that's, again, you get what you pay for. You get what you bought. You bought a marketing company. You did not buy a local photographer. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I made less than a third of what I normally make for what I do. Um, so I actually, you know, it's a big risk deleting photos throughout the day, but yeah. you know, in the end of the, at the end of it, it wasn't my brand that I was protecting. Well, yeah, exactly. It's not your name on it afterwards. So therefore it's different. Like and James, I oh, yeah. I sorry. I, I want to answer on that part too. I also believe it's great to do that because Problems come when you offer options on something that you don't believe into. Yeah. So it's better to take them away because once you make them an option of keeping them or not, then you have arguments. Well, I like the way you did that. Well, I like that. That's what I want. So it's better off out of sight, out of mind. And, yeah. and it saves a ton of arguments, of bad feelings. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than putting all that work into it. And you knowing they hired you because you are a professional. You're hired to know what is right. It's like when I used to fix computers years ago in the early 2000s, I used to go home to this rural area where everybody still had 56K. You know, they'll come back from the city. Everybody, oh, we need this. Oh, I want to hook up a printer. Oh, I want to. And I'd spend the whole time with them telling me what to do. So I just was like, listen, I'm going to fix it and I'm going to bring it back to you. And it made my life so much simpler. People are bad when you give them options that they don't need. Don't let them help. They don't, they're not there for that. You ask me because I know what I'm not. This is not egotistical. It would be the same as if I went to a butcher and said, how do I cut this? Or went to a carpenter and said, how do I build a set of stairs? I go to them because they have the techniques of the area. Right. Once again, with cell phones, people, and I know I keep coming back to that, people are all of a sudden masters of photography now. <laughs> and I'll watch that. Like, we're shooting around, and I mean, I'm holding a $1,200 camera in one hand, and somebody's holding a cell phone, and they're like, Oh, look, look, at you got to catch it from this side. And oh, no, look, look at what I got here. And it's like, God, mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen it. Believe me, don't go showing it around. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm less concerned about the guests. I mean, sometimes you just got to let them do what they want. So then they're just out of your way if they're so bothersome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. I've done that too. Yeah, um, Betty, but like, it's also what you were saying, Andrew, addresses what James was saying. Like, uh, you know, like you should to give them everything because what if there's something that they could crop out and the rest of the picture is great but that's the point they hire you as a professional so i as a professional will see yeah. if there is a picture that uh, i don't know is blurry in the corner but otherwise is out of this world well i will edit it so it looks out of this world right they hired right. me they trusted me that i will make that choice so therefore i don't think there is a need to give them raw or like everything well, the other side yeah. of that is that if you're giving them something you need to give them the best because if you don't give them your work it's not your work and you know i've already had people do things like that where 
they crop my work very, very poorly. Mm -hmm. My name's on that. You're yep. sharing that around. So Wait. if it's going somewhere else, like, you know, we shoot in a way that it looks good as a four by six, an eight by 10. Yep. You know, we have to adjust for all the, and a five by seven. So you have to, those are the three basic ratios that you have to make sure it always looks good in. And that's what we know to do. Yeah. But when they sit there and they crop it and they just destroy your work and then, it, you know what? Yeah, you can, everybody will sit there and say, oh, well, you know, it's their picture. Yeah. No, it's not. It's it's the photographer's picture. It Under is. copyright law, it is the photographer's. Exactly. It was yeah. your vision that caught that moment. You can right. do whatever you want to, but it originated in your eye. And also, I think oftentimes, like, how you get the clients is they look at your previous work, right? And, like, for example, I, I, I edit uh, pictures a lot, but not to take something out, but I take some of the pictures, like top 10, let's say, or 20, uh, and, and really work on each of them separately to bring, you know, yeah. all the details out right. and, and all that. And, uh, well, if they see that work and that's why they book me, that's not what they're going to see in raw obviously raw is a right. black image that doesn't have anything into it and barely have any color or contrast or anything so if they uh, you know buy my work uh, or my, my services going on the photos that they see well they're not gonna get it if they i just give them uh, a whole bunch yeah. of pictures out of the camera you know no i had a i had a um i had a package not too long ago that was $500. And what it was, was I would show up at the event, shoot the pictures and give you all the photos. And I would do the same kind of thing where I would delete it during the day um, and give it to you. And this was, you could not book this a year in advance. You could not book this more than three months in advance. Mm -hmm. So basically if I had the day free, I would come shoot your wedding as uncle tom yeah, yeah. <laughs> and shoot your wedding for you and give you the pictures so you got a the idea was is that you're renting a professional camera and a professional person literally there was a phone call beforehand and there was a handoff of pictures that i didn't i didn't spend any time with you it was literally you were renting the camera and giving me a couple hundred dollars to be there and take the pictures mm -hmm. yeah and that's a different type of service that's and not didn't uh, work yeah. didn't work at all. I don't think I sold one. Yeah. <laughs> I had people call me and I'm like, no, you have to, you know, and they want to book it a year in advance. I'm like, no, because I, I could get a wedding for my normal rates. I'm willing to right. do this on a last minute basis only. And it's a, right. and it would be a crapshoot, but I really, I never had anybody take me up on it. Yeah. And usually people want to steal something. They want, after they get the pictures, they want this done or that done. So it's yeah. still editing involved, you know. Uh, and if they want the package that you were describing, I love it. It's as, as, it's as clear renting a camera yeah. with the hands around it as it yeah. can be. <clears throat> uh, but you're right, you know, you could possibly get a, a bigger package booked on that day. So it would make no sense of booking it in a longer advance, for sure. Yeah. For sure, but it's a great model for. Yeah, last it is. Minute, That's so I, like I, it. I, I know. I'm just falling <laughs> over my it. head. Yeah. That is really. That's really quite ingenious, actually. <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, turning back to the question about products, so do you offer any prints as well with your package, or is it the digitals that you give them? So my, I, I offer the, um, I offer the basic package, which is basically, uh, you know, I take the pictures, I edit them, and I turn them over on a, on a USB drive. Okay. And then I have the one that kind of has everything in it. It comes with a book, a 12 by 12 book, and which is up to about 40, 50 pictures in it. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, if they, uh, it comes with an 11 by 14 print for their wall of their choice. Um, and then they can buy beyond that. But realistically, I, I just tell them, look, you already have them. Here's where you go to get it. You know, here's some reputable places that you can get it done well and you don't have to worry about it because they paid me for it. I've already gotten my money. And yeah. so to sell prints, I mean, I'm if I was doing a 
package where it's like, oh, well, it's, you know, $800 for me to show up and another $200 for the book. And then you can buy and you don't get anything and you, you want to buy it then. But that's not my model. My model. I mean, you know, that package where you're getting um, everything, you're, you're spending like $2,500. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's really more about here's where you can go. And then, you know, instead of giving me more money, send me more people. <laughs> Yes, that's right. <laughs> Isn't that the best? That is so true. And some photographers don't get that part, how important word of mouth is. That's how you make almost instantaneous sales with customers is that word of mouth. Well, yeah, you book the yeah. weddings on the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what yeah. often happens is that you mm-hmm. get new clients while you're yeah. shooting the wedding. There's five people sure. taking your cards that actually yeah. are decent leads. So. <laughs> yeah. But, Side note for everybody here, just if you're, you heard us talking, we were mentioning flat a lot. Flat is just basically almost like a colorless, colorless photo in layman's terms. Yeah, raw, yeah, raw. or flat video, yeah. And um, it's used, and then in post-production is where you can make the major adjustments and then add color into it. So it that's has what, to be post-processed, yeah. Yes. That's great. No, I just want no, to no, reiterate, it's, it's not editing, because people no, but I, say, I, well, you edit pictures. But I do consider no. part of the editing process into yeah. it. Yeah. But it's it's usually, that's what gives your continuity to a day, and you'll notice with professional photographers why they have that look, whether it's by the barn and then by the church and by the, the town, and sunny, rainy, you'll notice they have a lot of continuity in the shots, that's why. It gives also a more leeway uh, yeah. for details and uh, see my camera won't shoot flat it will but i had to buy the two thousand dollar attachment so at the time i'm just shooting it manually flat by lowering all the saturation and uh bring up the contrast a little bit sorry i just thought i'd mention that because i'm sure there's some people in here who are wondering yeah what yeah no i shoot uh i seen james was mentioning that you should be uh shooting both jpeg and raw I I tried that at the very beginning of my photography journey, so to say, and then I turned to rods because it takes just too much space. And yeah, I don't use the JPEG at all. Yeah. I've never used it. And the thing is, is that I use Lightroom, and you just export it. It's so easy. Exactly. Exactly. It's really not worth it to have the JPEG. No, it just takes more space, and uh, you know, if if I don't know what your uh, I like uh, idea behind it, why uh, why would you do that? If that's uh, because you would want to share it instantly, well, uh, you can do it almost instantly by doing, as you just said, processing in Lightroom anyway. So I yeah, I, I definitely should just just draw. I just I don't know. It just uh, gives more. Yeah. That, that's kind of my philosophy as well. Yeah. I'm talking but, about the, the products and, and things like that. Uh, I, I know a lot a lot of people, well, it's not a new thing, but it has been taking off too, is using the IPS model with the interpersonal sales uh, where they actually, uh, the, the, the fee that they pay at the beginning is more like a booking fee. And then they upsell you with the prints and canvases they go to your home and, and yeah. show where the picture would would be and how it would look like and, and sell those things for thousands of dollars. And um, I, I kind of have dual uh, feelings about it. What, what are your uh, feelings about that type of model that people are using? I tried that model. Um, in my area, in my clientele, it wasn't working. Um, it just, I, it was, it, it just didn't work. It, I, I don't know how, how these people do that. I, and I guess it's, you know, when you're, when you're up against how many photographers that I am and just the general, you know, I, I listened to all the photographers say, oh, well, you know what, this is in every area. And I'm like, no, you're getting lucky. And the only reason you're doing it is, you know, if you were truly making that, you wouldn't be doing these um, teaching classes because <laughs> yeah, that's where they tell class. you that. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the teaching classes. Well, I've already made it big and now I'm going to yeah. teach you how to do it. Like yeah. really, because I don't know anybody that's actually doing this except for these apparent teachers. Yes. <laughs> you, got that right. you nailed a big one right there. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I've looked into, I've done things like that where it was like, you know, 50 to a hundred dollars for me to come out and shoot it. And then you bought the prints and it ended up just people getting mad more than anything. And I, there is a place for it. I've done it where um, 
I did it for uh, my daughter's dance studio. Basically, the dance studio had a horrible, horrible photographer. I mean, just bad. I mean, the color, the the white balance was off. It, it, just terrible. And um, I gave him a proposal. And basically, the response was that, well, this guy that does it helped me get started. And as long as he wants to do it, it's his. Okay. Well, okay. So what happened was, is one year I did my own daughter's pictures. And of course we show them around on Facebook and stuff like that. And everybody went, wow, who did those? Wow. Where did you get those? So the following year I started doing, I would just pick a day. I would set up a curtain at, or a backdrop at somebody's house and I would just take photos all day. And then, and I wouldn't charge any sitting fee and I would just go with them and say, okay, what do you want to buy? And they could buy whatever they wanted. Right. And I, you know, I didn't make a ton of money doing it. It was more just, yeah, you know, because these are people that were at the dance school and I knew the situation. And honestly, you know, it's like school pictures. They, people don't want to spend a lot on those things. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I, and I always feel uh, kind of um, like it's part of a scam almost. Mm -hmm. uh, like <laughs> It's got a dirty element yeah, to it, it all the like time. I feel, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, that's yeah. right. So, and, and I mean, people do that and I don't knock them uh, for and that. For some people it works. That's great. But I personally wouldn't be able to do that. The uh, hard part, it's almost like, and it does happen a lot of things. I remember that in uh, martial arts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they always get the guy, oh, I've done this. Well, if you've done this and that, usually you're not charging this amount to do this and that. You usually don't have time to do this and that. And yeah. the ones that do have this credibility behind them, they cost a fortune, if you're lucky enough to even catch one of them. Yeah. yeah. Some of those too good to be true things, you know, and you're really going to do your research onto it. Well, yeah, I don't see, like, the big, big name photographers doing that. No, but yes, even, like, example. we'll call them, like, <laughs> we'll call them mid-range, you know? Yeah. Right. Even those guys, I mean, they do have a very... They're good at what they do, so of course they got a pretty decent business. So you know, here, here's the thing. Uh, you know, when I was picking my YouTube channel and what I wanted to do, so let me go. Let me tell a little bit of story about how I got into YouTube and why. Sure. Yeah, that would be um, great. I, I, in the end of 2016, uh, I was a graphic designer for a a company, and there, were, my boss was there was an opening above her. So she was going to supposedly interview and she came in and said she wanted to do this, that, and the other thing. And one of the things was, was video. So I'm like, well, if she's going to do that, I want to learn. I want to be the guy that takes care of the video. Cause I was the photographer. I want to do this. Mm. So I started learning about YouTube and how to do this. So it has started out as being a way to get this job that would come up or could be coming up. And then nothing happened. And I, meantime, I'm researching and I'm like, wow, you know, here's a company that has 10,000 clients. It was a pet store business. 10, I think it was 10,000 accounts. They have salespeople. They have all these people internally, et cetera. So you're talking, you have like 10, 15,000 people built in that are automatically viewers. Mm -hmm. Even if you get half of them, you're in great shape. Yes. yes. So I was like, wow, you could grow this really quick, really fast. You would all, you know, right off the gate like that. You're talking 7,000 subscribers that are really, and then I had this whole plan that I was going to sell, that I was selling, eventually going to sell them one, like give them each a TV, Yeah. put a TV with a Roku stick or something in it and have them play the videos all day. You got, if you get 5,000 stores playing your video for 12 yeah. hours a day, you're going to make money. Yeah. And they passed. Yeah. And that was a hit for me. So I stopped. And then that was like um, March. That all went down. May, or maybe even later than that, maybe, maybe April, May, I bought my Camaro. And I went to a car, I joined a car club, a Camaro club, and there was another YouTuber in there who was just getting started. And I was like, oh, this will be great. You know, we'll build off of each other. Mm. So he, we started doing that. Okay. And um, I, I, I just, I had thought about photography, but it, it's, it, it's a genre that is so difficult. And there's so many people on YouTube that are, producing photo videos and don't know a thing about photography. There's so much bad advice. 
And I just sat there and said, I'm going to be in arguments all the time. It's going to be a fight all the way up. Like, I just don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided to do cars. The problem with cars is it's, it's also a very difficult channel because it's very expensive. People want yeah. to see you do modifications to your car yeah. and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I'm really looking for YouTube to replace my photography business <laughs> income. Um, and that's kind of what the wedding 911 is going to be is it's actually going to be focused, you know, merchandise and apparel and uh you know affiliate accounts so that i'm recommending things and i'm reviewing items and stuff like that i think it's a great idea and also great timing for that uh, spring is coming yep. the wedding season is uh, getting busy and uh, i mean it's always had the first year but you're already building yeah. and you even get like 15 percent of the people getting married even show interest in your channel it gives us that time to start building for the fall and winter when everybody starts planning for the previous right for the pre well, preceding year excuse me i'm actually going to build it kind of the same way that you would if you were planning if you just got engaged today like you know so the pre things and then looking one week will be the venue one week will be the photographer one week will be the dj one you know and, and just take one topic every week eventually it'll be diys and yep. you know so it'll really uh, it'll take me a year to get through yeah. everything in just the planning phase and then you can i can come back and i can go oh well here's how to fold na napkins for a wedding you know i mean just little things like that yep for sure, a wedding is such a. It's got uh, everything into uh, it. Yeah, it's a wide uh, business. Uh, I mean, when we were doing the planning weddings for for Europe and Iceland, uh, yeah. when we had that business more focused on that, uh, there's there was a lot of work, a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of companies to contact, a lot of a lot of thinking out of the box, yeah. a lot of yeah. requests that you would have never ever thought in a million years for a wedding. It was you know? quite an experience for sure. And also because we were doing back and forth from here and Iceland. So it, yeah. uh, you know, it kind of uh, transitioned with the destinations as well and travel as well. So it, it's a wide topic for sure, but it's exciting and it's interesting. And I it's like hard to, be to balance too, because you're dealing with another country with another set of values. I mean, Europe does right. have, a, not a, no offense to me, because my wife, of course, from there where we joke around a lot of time about the different pace of doing things. <laughs> and Iceland <laughs> takes Europe and multiplies by three. Literally, sometimes it would take a month to hear from a makeup artist. Yeah. And they're wow. so busy over there because the country's just exploded. They're not hurting for the work, but it's not they're being cocky. It's literally just their time management, the way they do things. Where you have a bride freaking out here, you know, and trying to explain to her, well, this is just... There's nothing, even if I lived there, I wouldn't get a faster answer even if I went to their door. Yeah, you're just dealing with the way things go. You yeah, know? you need to have oh. your affiliations on the call, so to say, if you want to book it for a client there, because uh, oftentimes the client yeah. comes too late for Icelandic standards. So yeah. that, that's how we were working, basically. Uh, so, so you're yeah. almost like a translator at that point, too, if you're doing international <laughs> ones. Really, you are yeah. you're a facilitator of slash translator. But I loved it. And I, I loved especially also the social media community of wedding uh, vendors and and wedding websites blogs uh we we were featured in lots of the blogs as well um yeah. talking about the wedding planning and all that i i really enjoy that part because it's always a, a joyous occasion and i didn't find a lot of like bad competition between uh people we were I, lucky I, though i think yeah, there's some you're very really lucky because let me tell you something yeah. there's a uh in a facebook group of where i live the area wedding vendors and I went on there and I said, hey, I'm doing this channel. I want to feature people. And But the thing was is that it wasn't going to feature uh, their business. Mm -hmm. They were going to come on as an expert in their field. I would, of course, introduce them. I would tell them people who they were and, and get some of their background so you had an idea of what their experience was. But I told them this is not a promotional piece for you. This is, this is you talking as an expert. And I said I wanted DJs, videographers, vendors, and uh, wedding planners. Mm -hmm. This is a huge group. I got one response from a wedding planner. That yeah, was it. Weird. <laughs> yeah, it was. It. I mean, literally, the 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 wedding vendors in this area are horrible. 
They are catty. They talk about each other. They put each other down. I mean, it is really, really bad. Like that's one of the reasons I, I just don't do anything with it anymore and just do word of mouth. Yeah. And that's, that is common, especially around in North America scenes and stuff like that. You do hear a lot of that. It's kind of like the housewives of photography, you know, they're all <laughs> trying to tear the other one down faster than lightning if possible. But, the, but yeah. they don't understand oftentimes, I think, and it's not just the wedding business. It's just building these connections is what builds the, the business as a whole in general, you know. It's not just a, a word of mouth yeah. for clients. It's word of mouth with, between the vendors as well. You know, if, if there's a a cake shop down the street and somebody comes in and say well, you know what i'm also looking for a photographer and i already have contacted them and we have a really good relationship well obviously they're gonna suggest us as a photographer right yeah. so building it's those relationship networking is, yeah. is part of it should be part of it right yeah no it's very clicky around here and it's nobody gets put in yeah. uh, it's, it's too bad it works like that and it's um, but that's everything is like that you're always gonna have you know, you're even talking about YouTube is back to that. Like, you know, in the channels are going, there's always things that start off so good and then always end up kind of Lord of the Flies. You know, <laughs> it's just that natural progression, unfortunately, seems to go to that, you know, route. So it's, it's too bad, but it's, you know, you got to just make yourself stand above it and find your own groups. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to be into it, not everything is easy, but just find a way to make it work free and avoid the people that are going to bring you down, I guess. It's a bit corny, but it's just really what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I don't let anybody bring me down. I just, I like I said, I just kind of remove myself from the scene, and I do a couple a year. And like I said, I'm building my YouTube channel to eventually. I want it to replace that. Um, but I'll never forget a story. I um, every once in a while, it used to be really big about I don't know seven years ago or so. Um, now, have you guys ever worked with um, Time Four? think so uh, to the best of my knowledge no i don't think i don't believe no so time for in photography so that everybody watching knows is that models and photographers will get together and basically the idea is is you share prints you, you share the images so the photographer you work with a great photographer that you like and you're going to get portfolio pieces from and you work the photographer works with a model to get portfolio pieces everybody works for free and then you share the images well there was a time when I would see all the time on Craigslist models going on looking for a wedding photographer to do TF and they could use the images in their portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got so tired of seeing it that I did a um, RE colon wedding photographer. You're like their title. Yeah. And I said, Thank you for your, your, you know, doing this. I think this is great. I would love to be a part of it, you know. Um, but here's what we'll need to do. Um, I'll need to get there at about 5 a.m. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do this, 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 and this. And then, you know, and I basically set up, like, what you would actually do if you were doing a commercial shoot like that. And basically, I, I also said, well, we, um, we're we going to have I, – I won't interrupt your wedding because, you know, in a lot of cases that's a sacrament. So we won't do that. But we're going to need to redo it afterwards so that I can get the pictures I want from the angle that I want. Right. Um, and then we're going to have to go to um, the place of my choice. And, you know, I would try and figure out where they were or where they were getting married or something. Or I would say, I don't know this great place like – an hour away, you know, so that this is where I want my pictures at. And I just did this whole thing. And that was ironically the last time anybody ever posted that they were looking for a free photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I yeah, like it <laughs> but oftentimes yeah. for portfolio uh, purposes, I think photographers are uh, anybody wanting to have portfolio as a model. Photographers are the ones to connect with. Like recently, for example, we were uh, connected one of our uh, known models that you've seen yeah. in our video uh, connected with Steve Gerard, which is Montreal photographer, but he works in UK as well as here. And he was doing a workshop here uh, for wedding photography and was looking for a couple. Uh, and uh, the, the girl, she was looking for uh, pictures for a portfolio. So that was a great match. And they had amazing time yeah. uh, doing pictures. And she had a whole bunch of free, free photos from uh, a whole bunch of uh, professional photographers. 
So if I think the best way is not to put the Craigslist, yeah. <laughs> is is to contact yeah. a photographer and see if they yeah. Have if you look up with a reputable photographer, a reputable model, it's one thing. Sometimes you know there is that beneficial job that can pay off doing that. Yeah. But I would never want to make it a habit, and it'd be very, very. It needs to be somebody that's going to elevate you, not just move you sideways. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I've worked with a lot of models that were new and and didn't know where they were going, and basically I I have this rule that I will work with anyone as long as I get something out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. No, exactly. That is that you know um, I've had people come to me and say, Oh, I need photos for my portfolio. Like today, like now today it would be, I would say fine, but I need video for my YouTube channel. So I'm willing to take photos for you. If you're willing to do videos for me. Yeah. And if they said, Oh no, I don't, I don't want to be on a video I'd say, well, then I'm sorry. I really don't have any use for photos of you. That's right. hundred percent. It's, it's, they're not always a benefit just because they decided to take you for free. Like, you know, when you really think of it, that's what it translates to. I will use you, no money, yeah. and that's your reward for it. And that's what I meant about moving. That's moving sideways or even down, if you want to call it. But if you have yeah. a beautiful, like you say, it doesn't have to be somebody with the biggest name in the world, but oh my God, she's striking. And look at this place she's got, like, you know, she's got a, a million dollar estate of her grandfather could shoot at. You know what? It might be such a bad place to go for a day because you can get right. some top notch photos. Um, yeah, because I've already, I mean, I had, um, I actually had a magazine um, called More Than a Snap Snapshot that is actually still on jumag.com. Mm. And I had a friend who had a mansion and, you know, models, you can't book one model because they don't show up. Right. I would book like four or five models. I would have makeup artists. I would, I had the generally from the Dukes of Hazard. I had Kit from Knight Rider there one day. No, like, oh I would my bring God. all <laughs> these things in together to do one massive shoot. And it was just everybody. And, you know, the guys with the cars, I treated them, I treated the cars as a model. They got pictures of their car. So I would shoot cars with just the car and with the models. And they would get all those pictures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you caught some people's ears in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> I can see the cars. <laughs> Violet Bird and them. What the General Lee? Yeah, I've also I well the guy who has a, a um uh well the guy who has the General Lee he also has the uh the uh tractor trailer the the tractor from B J and the Bear. You're kidding me. No, yeah. No, it's not, way. That's not restored yet, but he has it. Oh no, the oh old cab over. Oh my god! And he also has the stunt truck from the Fall Guy. Yeah, oh my and that's god. not really oh, done either. Yeah, he's, <laughs> all he's missing is Magnum's Ferrari and Kit car, and he's pretty much set. Well, I know the other guy that has Kit, okay. and the guy that but that has Kit, he built it himself, and he just got done last year. I think it was he built a. Optimus Prime. Oh my God! Oh my God! That's so cool. That's <laughs> yeah. so crazy. I can't believe. I know people are going to be all these other cars. They're not going to get BJ and the Bear as much, but I just can't get over that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did a uh, I did a shoot with uh, Optimus Prime for. I have a video up with him. Um, I don't shoot hit girls with hit with Optimus Prime because he actually has. He got permission from Hasbro to to build it. So like Hasbro can't come back to him and do anything. And he's actually trying to get sponsored by Hasbro because what he does is he takes it to comic cons, but you know, he'll take it somewhere and have, um, um, like you could rent it. Like, like when the new transformer movie came out, he would be like, you know, you could rent it like a limo. He would drive you to see it in wow. Optimus Prime. You could get the first day of school. He would drive you. He went to somewhere to, to a, a girl got it for her fiance's birthday to just show up. And, you know, he also has uh, in his group, he has uh, Bumblebee and uh, the Decepticon Mustang um, cop car. Oh my God. I forget uh -huh. that, the name of the character. Yeah, no, but I know what you're talking about though. I think, yeah, I think it's an Optimus Prime. Somebody in there must know. Yeah, I'm sure somebody's going to correct us at some point, so I'm just going to bring it right out because they're good. They, they're good at that. So, uh, yeah, because Optimus Prime was the truck, right? And I and once I hear 
once I hear the cop car's name, yeah. I would, I'll just it'll like that. But and I can picture it right now in front of me. But yeah, yeah, it, it's the one from the first movie has it <laughs> to punish and enslave. <laughs> Camaro time is uh, talking about uh, you've seen at the uh, Charlotte Auto Fair. General uh, Lee, Smokey and the Bandit, Justice Car with the top chopped off. They seen there last weekend. Starsky and Hutch, Magnum yeah. PI. Yeah. yeah. My God, everybody just, we are here, generally. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Uh, the shows that I watched fan. when we were young and then they yeah. said Barricade. Susie's channel, she got it. Barricade, that's right. <laughs> Xenia, because she grew up in um, in an ex-Soviet country, like the wall fell when you were, what, six? Yeah. So she got a lot of the shows later on. So even though we have an age difference between us, we both kind of watch the same shows, yeah. but in different eras. <laughs> Like she was watching Dallas in the '90s and stuff yeah. like that, you know. So Dynasty. Dynasty was a big show of hers. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, what's another one you liked? Uh, a Team. No, Bruce Willis and uh, 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 Moon, uh, Moonlight. Yeah. Moonlight. Yeah. Moonlight. Yeah. Well, everybody. Oh, that. Everybody's talking about the General Lee, so I, I got to tell you about this General Lee. This General Lee is a fan built car. It's not one of the originals. The difference between a fan belt and original is is that if you actually own one of the original General Lees that were used in the show, mm -hmm. you don't own it. You do not have a title for it. Um, there's wow. a company that actually gave them away. You cannot sell it. You cannot charge to show it or anything like that. But a fan built, you can. Um, you know, it, it's yours. This car that he has is exact replica down to the tires. The CB wow. is the exact CB that was in the show car. Wow. Everything is exact. He takes it to the, um, the reunion every, well, he goes most years, but he gets everybody from the show that he can find the stunt guys. He's got John Schneider's and, uh, uh, Catherine Bach and everybody's signature wow. on the inside of the trunk lid. That is so cool. That is amazing. Can I, I have a question for you about a technical one? Now, this one will it squeal in? Will it squeal in swamps the way the original one did on the TV <laughs> show? <laughs> I don't know if it'll squeal in a swamp. I don't think it's ever seen a swamp. But yeah, I mean it. it it's got the Dixie horn. It's got it's got it all, man. And you know what? I was doing in a photo shoot, and um, all of a sudden, somebody opened the door. Because I mean, even the, in the show, the door's open. I mean, there are a couple scenes where you can see Uncle Jesse open the door to get out. Can you? Yes, there's a couple scenes oh. where you can see the door open because there's no way Uncle Jesse could climb in and out. No. And I'm thinking of that now. I remember one time it was part of the act. He was all kind of crippled in. They had to well, live. Yeah, oh. but he, he's but, not going to yeah, do it. And I, it's hard. Like, I climbed in and out of it, and it is not easy. <laughs> but somebody opened the door, and I yelled at them. I said, you don't open the door of that car. <laughs> Sacrilege. Sacrilege, I'm telling you. <laughs> it was funny, those shows, you know, like, even um, one of my favorite ones when I was younger was MacGyver. And thinking, you know, this man had the world by the ass, pardon the term. And then you get older and you go back and watch these shows and you realize just how duped you were when you were a child. <laughs> you know, like it, 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 it's it's unbelievable how blatantly bad some things were done, but you still ate it up because of the story. Yeah. But I think back then, that's something that kind of tied into YouTube and all these things. We've become a lot more of a connoisseur because of all the videos around us. Uh, we've lost a lot of that na the naiveness that let us enjoy a story sometimes. We dig so technical into it. And I love the technical side. I mean, that's our business. But I, I don't know. Sometimes I just wish there was a little bit more of that into it. You know, they get lost in the story. You know, last night you were talking a little bit about, you know, how live streams were going to be the, the future. And, and I disagreed. I said there's always good. Because even live TV, you have the news that's live. Yeah. But there's always going to be that edited beautiful thing that people are going to want to watch that is entertaining because I, I don't watch live streams and replay They're to me. They're boring. They're too long. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to sit for an hour or hours watching a conversation, but when it's live, you're engaged in the chat. You're, yeah. you know, in those types of things. Um, yeah. I actually, when I do li my live streams, I pick a topic, I talk about the topic 
And then if it goes off topic, it goes off topic. And then I edit out the end so that I end up with a video that's maybe 30 or 40 minutes about the topic I wanted. And that's it. So it's a, it's a replay that somebody I hope will click on. Mm -hmm. well, oh, sorry. Well, we were just caught here. We had a computer freeze. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you, I, I, uh, yeah, and I guess I think it's in a way it is a, a a way of doing it to see if you want to focus on the subject for sure. We oftentimes I think are known of branching everywhere. Look at us now. We started with with wedding with you with yeah. weddings and talking about general we so yeah. like yeah. when we even started this channel, this channel, yes, I want to monetize it. I'll never lie about that since it's picked up. I had given up because I didn't feel it was going anywhere. It was too much work editing for nobody to see it. Right. It was disheartening. And as much as I appreciate seeing the sub count go up, the biggest pleasure of all is somebody finding like my train video from the, the, the windmills and that and truly being immersed into it, especially somebody who doesn't like trains or you know, or doesn't care for trains or the Montreal uh, with the model. And uh, I believe that with you too i i was saying last night about live streams and i agree with they're going to get more popular but i don't think they'll have very much longevity to them they'll almost be like discarded and even as live streams have been very good to us you can see they don't get views a week later and stuff where the train ones and them are still getting it and yeah. my great comparison to that is when cds came out and we said goodbye to vinyl we'll never touch it again and vinyl now has a place and is coming back mm -hmm. and the same as a song uh you can't write a song and compose it and have it memorable when you're writing it on the fly on a on a live version of whatever you were doing. It needs that touch. It needs that, that working, that editing. People think editing kills creativity, but it doesn't. You're actually using the creativity of the artist. You're using the creativity of the editor, the creativity of the producer, which makes that memorable song. And I believe the same with video. I love my live streams. I love chatting with everybody here. I think it's amazing. But I believe my videos will stand the test of time a lot further than what my our live streams will oh, do. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's exactly that what I was uh, saying last night is how there will always be that. Because you can. You can make it beautiful and edit it and all that kind of things that you just can't do live like um when i go to car shows i'll do what i call glamour shots so if you think of a glamour yeah. shot of the girls i do that of cars on yes. video you know i i, I kind of take that step um but it, i could never do that live without a dozen cameras and a video truck yes exactly <laughs> that's what's driving me crazy about this there's so many things like i open up with the intro just to give us time to get started in that and i feel like so uh wonky doing it you know it's not the way i want to do it i want to have camera three four five all right load up this web page <laughs> you got this going let's get this thing happening and I, as much what i'm getting here and the total enjoyment i do get in interacting with all of you and i truly do with all of my heart it's opened up something new that i never thought i would ever like or do well it, it doesn't satisfy the creativity side that i get from doing editing video and here here's how you do it um use obs yeah and you have to download something search virtual cam yeah okay? it's basically a plugin for obs okay so now instead of um instead of selecting your web camera you're going to select virtual camera as your outgoing stream right so like that's how i have a green screen for a background Mm -hmm. um, but I can build all kinds of stuff, but not only that, I can do things like, um, like I can show you, there's my main screen. Now I work on three screens, but there's my main screen. So I could have a page up there. I could have all my pages lined up and that quickly I could set it up. I can have intros. So all of a sudden it'll come back and there's my intro to get started. Okay. So that when you play my live, my replay, my live stream is going to show everything. You know, it's going to have that same look that my edited videos have. Right. Okay. So there are ways to do that. I mean, you know, I have, I mean, I could do, you know, I can change my location that simple. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Just very, very easily. So that's how you can get that creative side. Um, 
on there. I can bring in my logo. You see, that's mm -hmm. what I found hard with this because we never planned on doing this. And I'm usually a person who likes to prepare and practice for a long time before I do anything. And we yeah. kind of felt, but first, I'll be polite to anybody else that's out there because I don't know how sensitive some are, into what we're doing. Because this was never in the cards. It was actually the polar opposite of what we wanted to do. I never wanted to be in front of a camera in any shape or form. So we didn't do the research on this one. I feel so like a duck out of water. <laughs> OBS, I have a question for you. So if you're talking sure. about that, this is perfect. Can you uh, can you have guests on OBS like uh, and show them? Um, I've had I've had some success with it. Um, I've had success with one person, um, and it's been a while since I did that. But yes, I've had like I could I could do a whole scene with um i don't think i have anything set up um but i could do a whole scene where with the only one person like i could have you take the google hangouts yeah and i could make that like i could have a 50 50 screen kind of thing right. i could do whatever i wanted with that but when you have multiple people mm -hmm. it gets more difficult yes mm -hmm. um and it's actually how you live stream gets difficult when you're when you're doing it like i i, I think i figured out how to do it with two people because yeah. basically you only have a a window yours doesn't change back and forth between you and i but when you have multiples it keeps changing yeah so if you couldn't do that like actually run you were talking about the virtual side but actually another uh another uh, physical like computer or laptop beside you running the hangouts and then bring that in as a guest on obs well no what would happen is is that you build scenes on obs let me see if i can um it gets a little uh you know kind of mirrors but there's kind of my there's my obs okay right. so what you do is you actually build the scene Mm -hmm. um so you, i have all these different scenes that i can just click on like i can go main display with me and there it is so i can have if i like i was talking about the um the new camaro that came out so i can actually sit here and i can still be on camera but i have my my background behind me but i could still take that and i can move me over here and i could simply do you know something like this and have a background and then we could be on a 50 50 kind of thing okay you know, so you'd be able to see both of us right. um and all i would have to do is transition that in and that's what we're going to see yeah. hmm. well, and so that's editing okay. while on live what i was talking about yesterday there's yeah. more and more of that is coming in um, oh definitely yeah definitely. That's, that's, yeah that's and then there is a in the enhancements tab on your edit you know, when you edit your video, when you edit your titles and things like that, there you can actually do splits. And so that's how I take off the back end. So instead of having a two hour video, I have a 40 minute video that just talks about the subject that I wanted to talk about. Right. That's right. Cool. That's so my great. Sunday nights, I do a car talk with a bunch of car guys, different guys every week. And, you know, we'll talk about something last weekend was stupid things you did in a car. Mm. Well, we went on for like two hours, but only. 40 minutes of it was relevant to the topic. Right. So I just cut off the end. Yeah. And then you have live and your video yeah, at the exactly. same time. So that's that's a great way of doing yeah, it. No, so definitely. Definitely look into no I'm intrigued into it. We just kind of fell in the seat of our pants. I haven't had a chance to do any kind of research. I have OBS installed. But yeah. it's always that thing, well, I'll get to it tomorrow. <laughs> but we have two kids that live with us. We have a business, you know, and this, by the time we're going, is just to find the time. But I'm definitely... I'm one of those people that always want to go into something, you know, the, the most powerful of whatever tool there is to use. So. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way, and that's kind of why I did this, and that's why I have the newsroom and everything yeah. else. I mean, I have uh, one person that would um, uh, – she's a fan of mine and, is, and a supporter and has been for a while. And I, so the reason I have a green screen is because that my my studio is in my dining room. So right. and we have an old house, so it's you know living room, dining room, kitchen, and the steps are in the dining room. Okay. So my wife is up in our bedroom right now, and she will 
uh, she wants, she doesn't want to be trapped up there. She wants to be able to go to the kitchen and things like that. So I had to put up a, my, my solution was I'll put up a backdrop. Then I can be here for two, three hours, whatever it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And you can do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but it was an old, uh, background from like Sears and it was just a brick wall and it wouldn't sit absolutely perfect on my desk. You could kind of tell it was a background. She was giving me <laughs> crap for it. And I'm like, right. you know what? I'm going to figure it out. I've got green screen. I've got the lights. I'm going to make it work. Uh -huh. uh, and that's what I did now. So now I have the, I know there was a comment a, long, a while ago about the, the background and that's all it is, is it's just, you know, you can put videos back there. I mean, if you look in that background, there's, there's TVs playing back there. I, you know, you I, can I see the it. TVs behind the frosted glass. Um, <laughs> I and go back to that beach, you can see yeah. the waves coming. Yeah, in. definitely. And it's very cool. And I don't mean this wrongly because you admit that, like you said right away, you know, you're on a green screen. That, but there's some of these older guys. There's one guy in particular does these drone reviews. I've caught him a couple of times. And it shows him like in behind a busy newsroom. And yeah. he like, tries to like pretend that he's like, like, it's like, okay, the people aren't complete more, you know, it's a cool, effect. but he actually tries to make them think like he's in some sort of, uh, <laughs> You know, he got in with the BBC all of a sudden and they let him. I, I like bar. that uh, you can put the video behind. I love uh, it. Like, I, I would love to put like a video that we talk yeah. about and put yes. it in behind while we're talking about it. That's right. like something amazing. It's so work effective yeah. that way because it's more immersive. They got you plus it behind, you know. Right, exactly. And, you know, like I said, I can take and have my logo. You know, I can I could put a topic up there if I wanted to just talk about a... Uh, you know, a car or whatever. I can just put it right there and, and have it there. Yeah, well, that is the nice thing about it. You can even show footage of a passing, you know, those great uh, uh, type of, like, Camaro shots passing behind you as you're going, mm -hmm. you know, all the B-roll. Right. It's so immersive that way, you know? Yeah, and there's all kinds of different things. Like, you can have... Um, you can have image, game capture, display capture, browser. Like that's how, if you ever watch the live streams where the chat, before they would replay the chat, you, they would actually put it in the video. Well, you they did it with this. They would just attach it to the, um, mm -hmm. the, the chat's URL. And you, okay. I could just have it scrolling on here. Oh, okay. Well, that's so cool. I, I love it. We're that's, definitely going to, I like yeah, all no. these little little tricks and tips uh perfect i mean i can you know what i can even let me see if i can uh um, yeah did you i'm just oh. yeah we're all <laughs> we're all in the, we both <laughs> this is what you love about live television <laughs> oh yes we were both too in the middle of the. There, I think we got that fixed. I think. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Everybody loves my hair tonight. Thank you guys so much. I'm so touched. Yeah, everybody's I, commenting I, how much they like it, how yeah. much is 20 years younger. Uh, like we're. I'm Canadian. It's cold. That's what we do in the winter. You got to grow your bear it's shag for the winter. You know? It's still cold. But no, it was time to go, though. I had enough of it. <clears throat> it was fun for a while, but oh, <laughs> so I can even do. Let me try this one more time. Uh, let me just. I guess I can't. Let me. So I can even do something like this, where oh. it's just. Putting oh, the... that's cool. <gasps> yeah, no, we're definitely gonna get more into it. It's coming. You're a lot like the, the what you and I talking tonight. I see you and I have a lot of that in common. I can tell you that type of person, whatever you're into, you want to find out the extremes of it and then put it 10% more than what it was made to do. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I have a friend who does a lot of live streams and I was on with him and um it really was a, a uh, you know, showing him what he could do. He just doesn't have a computer to do it. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. So amazing. Well, we got a sidekick joining us. I see that. Yeah. Welcome, James. 
Uh, good evening. Good evening, everybody. How are you all? Oh, my God. Hi. Tie dye and everything and the hair. Did you get a hair yeah, cut, too? He got it cut wow. a couple of weeks ago. He got his hair celebrated first. two weeks ago. It's more than two weeks, I think. But um, Is it? Yeah. Yeah. You could see, you know, when I started the whole uh, I'm a creator thing, you know, with the big beard and the hair is yeah, yeah. like oh, massive and everything. Then I get it cut. I think that color pop is making yeah. you look different. I got <laughs> yeah. You, you kind of look says, like uh, what does it say? It says something about can you imagine? Uh, is this is this big like smiling cat on the front? Oh my god. You look like you're going to a Grateful Dead concert or something like that. I like it. Yeah. Or, that as well. or Readerville night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's it going? It's doing good. It's doing good. Um, did you get out with the dogs today? I did actually. Um, I would like to get a little bit more film footage than I got, but um, the waves on the lake were a little bit choppy as well. So I filmed a bit of that. I was going to do a video. I don't think I've got enough film footage though. I need to um, get back there. Wow. But uh, yeah, I managed to put the dogs in the back of the car. We have a dog who's, you know, who's old and he, he gets excited if he's outside and I get in the car. So he likes to go on little car rides. And so we took him to this uh, place where I've been walking down this beautiful path. Uh, it's all shaded by trees and it comes to a T section and you can walk right. And there's a post and on the top of it, there's an Eagle's nest on it and a bit of like a, a bit of a beach, but it's not as nice as if you go at the end of the T section, you go left and then up this bit of a, a embankment through the woods a path and then there's this beach there it's it's pretty you know it's pretty okay. nice how are you doing greg good how are you i'm doing great greg has been giving us some great information on using obs where it's kind of really glued to it because that's something i definitely want to do next and was looking for some ideas so yeah i want to uh, learn how to use obs and um it i don't know I, it, it blows my mind some of the um how it's yeah. i don't know how it works it's um there's just a lot of stuff there i know you can use it for recording you know videos and stuff like that and yeah. you can also use it for broadcasting too because i'd like to um while i'm broadcasting on youtube i'd like to also broadcast on on twitch at the same time because I, I truly do believe that live streaming now is uh very popular but it's like you guys touched on earlier on like at one point vinyl was you know kind of dead that's why a lot of record shops closed down but now it's coming back again yeah. and it's because a lot of people just like the way the sound you know that, that it gives rather than that you know cd can be a little bit too clean whereas yeah you, know, you get little crackles and the hisses with um with vinyl and uh it just it's just just sounds a lot different than than cd and it's like if you were to ask a fan of uh you know a rock group what would you rather do would you rather spend twenty dollars on this album or if we could get you a seat to the concert for twenty dollars because we know that you know these big bands aren't twenty dollars they're going to take the seat to the concert they'd sooner be there live and i think a lot of people would sooner be there live because you know you get to see people's mess ups mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it can be funny and things like yeah. that so I think that's what's good about live. And plus also, um, for some people, it's easy to do lives because there's no um, there's no editing. Well, yeah. no. And that's, that's a fine thing. lives when I do them. Get an yeah. extra video out very quick and easy. Exactly. I mean, it helps boost times. It's got all – I'm getting things out of doing these lives. I never would take them away. I love doing them, but it's not the same things I get from editing. And no matter what I do live or with OBS and master it, I will never achieve what I do with my videos that have 40 plus hours of editing because they're two different beasts altogether. They each shine for their own different reasons. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, um, if you are uh, live streaming, it's totally different to going out. You know, there's a lot of planning involved. I mean, there's planning involved with live streaming if you want to have a successful live stream. Yeah. But, but there's not as much planning in going out 
getting the right camera angles, the right shots, uh, adjusting like your, your camera because it might be a really, you know, gray day with not much sunlight. And if you're not, you know, if you're not doing it in automatic mode, you do everything in manual because you want, you know, you want your camera to to sing and dance and yeah. you manually can get it to produce what you want rather than the avid in auto mode. There's a lot more to that. And then obviously once you've done all that, you've got to bring it back and then you've got to download all the files yeah. into a folder and then put them into the editor. And then you got to start editing them. And then if there's music, you got to then spend hours looking. My, yeah, main, no, my, main, problem, my main problem and frustration with uh, video is not the concept of what I want to shoot and what I want to, you know, titles and stuff like that. And I want, I will want it to look none of that. That's pretty, you know, it can be long and laborious to me and frustrating, but the most frustrating thing with me is finding a piece of music that will go along with what I've shot that, that fit, fits the theme or a couple of pieces that's my frustrating uh, yeah. thing that because uh, <laughs> it just takes for ages oh, yep. sorry, spend an hour editing this great piece you're all set to go and spend two hours looking for a piece of music now you know guys i'm the exact opposite and i always pick my music first i always do 98 percent of the time this the, i want the video to complement the music but does it take you time looking for it? Oh, I'll have that, that song. You know the video I did, uh, She uh, Brought the 80s Back to Montreal? Mm -hmm. I had that song for six months. I've literally heard it 500 times. And I looked for everywhere for that right footage that would work well with that video. I had it in my head. I knew what it was going to be, but I just didn't know what I was going to see. And uh, I think that's my love affair with 80s videos growing up and stuff. I always... I'm playing music, so maybe I'm biased. And also, that is my main voice actor in our videos. Because the ones that I post here usually never have an actor. So it's the song that kind of gives the voice to everything. Uh, uh, we touched on that in, in uh, one of our uh, live streams last week. Um, the clip we use, and, and I found it a lot when I was researching background music for our pajama party, uh, is uh, a good go-to is SoundCloud. Because it no, it doesn't have all of it copyright free. But lots of them has in their about section, like in the artist section, uh, mentioned that it is copyright free or, or the link to their YouTube channel where it is copyright free mm -hmm. and actually the download link. So uh, like mainly now I use three things, uh, well, four. I, one is of them is hook sounds, hooksounds.com. There have lots amazing different, even with vocals and like they sound like actual song. Purple Planet is the other one that I find is really different yeah you were talking about that yeah. one. i haven't been on that one yet. soundcloud as i said because there's just such a big library of of artists that actually just give their music away and even the audio library from youtube yeah. is a great resource it's, it's i usually try to check four or five of these different resources every time yeah because you're always what do you use greg i use no copyright sound most of the time which is a youtube channel yep um and basically I haven't been doing it lately, but I would try to listen to the song that they love upload every day. And then if I like it, I would put it in a, in a yes. playlist so that I could just kind of go back when I'm looking for something. There's only been like one or two songs that I said, Oh, I want to build something around this song. But there was a lot that I said, this is a really good song for what I do. And one of the guys in my group, uh, just introduced me and I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's metal music in the same manner. Okay. At my last video, uh, got some compliments. It just kind of fit because all I was yeah. doing was the camera angles on my car. I wasn't trying to tell a st actual story. Mm -hmm. I uh, got a video. You'll see. There's two of them actually. The one with the, the 18 wheelers and the one with the ship being loaded. Mm -hmm. And I use metal for that because I wanted to do. I don't know if you guys remember in the mid 2000s on Discovery Channel, mo uh, Monster Machines. They always had you know. And they did their famous montages, you know, like dun, 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 you know, you see the trucks coming and back and forth. And I always wanted to kind of shoot stuff like that. And that music was like working perfect for it. What about you, James? Where do you get your music? I use um, basically uh, YouTube Studio because I've used um, I've used SoundCloud before, and I, I, I it was supposed to have been 
um, Creative Commons music. And uh, I ended up getting like a copyright thing on it. So although there's some people on there claim that, you know, it's their their own stuff on um, SoundCloud. Um, it's kind of, you know, a little bit, I'm a little bit leery of it, but uh, now the uh, Xenia's just uh, mentioned those two uh, URLs. I'll, I'll go and check those out and see what, uh, see what they're like. Yeah, you have to watch with SoundCloud too because they may say when they uploaded it that it was Creative Commons, but if they got it, if they got signed in the meantime and things like that, and that's the thing about uh, Creative Commons is is that they can copyright that at any time and your SOL. Yeah. I belong to a um, uh, it's uh, um stock video channel and they have stock sound as well and i was cautioned about stock sound and actually i downloaded a after effects um template that had music in it so i was like okay i guess i'm good to use it and when i uploaded this um video i got a copyright ding so they say you, if you pay for the song like use one of these um you know stock song things you really have to watch them there's no guarantee that youtube's not going to say it's copyrighted yeah um i got one from somebody the other day um i think it was um hey joe and that one you have to pay to use their service i was looking at it they've got a lot of music but uh, you you get to use it and i believe you can sign up for a short period on it uh for free you get to use it for free and that one is called uh, epidemic yeah. epidemic sir uh, it's the same one that uh, Peter McKinnon is using in his, I think. It's a bit, it, uh, it becomes more important for paying if you grow your channel. If you are yeah. up a certain amount, then they don't charge you. And as you grow, then it's... Uh, yeah. I just don't have the money right now to be paying for music because I don't, you know... If I, was, if, I was, if I was making a lot of money, then I would probably go to a service like this and uh, be probably paying the uh, $15 a month. Um, YouTube or create a subscription on the um, on the one here. That's I what I would. Also, a good idea just to contact these uh, artists themselves, like what you were saying about the SoundCloud. Uh, like once you check the connection back, like you know, obviously if it's just a link on a SoundCloud, you don't know what is the backstory. But if they have, you know, links to their other social media or their website, you can get in touch with them directly. And just ask if you can use their their music. And oftentimes, if they are small enough, uh, they are happy to share, so to say. The same as you know, photographers or videographers or anybody else who is just starting out, uh, just for a credit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's it's tricky. I know what Andrew's saying though about music. Um, I listen to music. You know, I sit there and I listen to music, like you know, from the YouTube. Um, you know, gallery. I I use that, and um, I, I I start to think some creative things about using it. And then what I should do actually is because my uh, memory is not that good. I should actually write down. I should actually write down uh, the song title and then my idea on a piece of paper. And uh, I, uh, I I just I just forget. But um, that's what I should do. I'll type it up into a document so that basically I can go back and then just because in there you can search and I could use that song title and search, download it. I have a lot of songs downloaded off that onto a thumb drive, uh, which I put in to my um, videos when I edit them. Yeah, another great way of YouTube, uh, too, is you can actually search for certain songs if they are copyrighted and how much are they. Because some of the, what we think, more popular songs might have only limited copyright, for example. You can use a certain, uh, you know, ways of it or certain part of it. So in that audio library, you can actually search uh, for a title and the band and see what kind of limits it has on. Like yeah. 
pop pop music or any metal music, any popular music, what I mean. That is one good thing about the YouTube uh, audio library is that you can actually go in there and you can put a title of a song in and it'll let you know whether you can use it or not because there are probably some songs that are, um, you know, you can use uh, like you guys were singing happy birthday the other day and I was joking about it that you know only recently has that lost its ability to be copyright because uh, yeah. these people were you know these people and that's why I don't like IP I don't like IP because there were people that were holding is you know they'd have an awesome birthday party they put it on YouTube and everybody's singing happy birthday and then boom you know the license holder of, the, of, of this would come along and claim you know the uh, monetization on on the channel and unless you wanted to go to court there's nothing you can do about it you know and this is a song that everybody sings and uh, my ip attorney friend was telling me something about they did something to a, a restaurant in um, i forget what state it was where you know they specialized in birthdays i mean they it, it can make people's lives miserable it, it's you know it's really evil you know, if you've got a dispute with somebody, go and settle it yourself. You yeah. know, don't don't use the violent monopoly of the state to go and do it for you. It's 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 it just really is. It's pure evil. Yeah, it was a um, a movie company that that owned it, and somebody took them to court, and it went all the way up, and uh, they they said, no, you can't copyright that. That's not a copyright, and that was only like two years ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's like the guy. It's like the guy who comes on, uh, who says, uh, "I'm not going to say it how he says it," but he, he's because like you know, he could claim copyright every time he finds out about it, and he says that. Let's get ready to, yeah. you know, and I'm going to say thumble, right? Yeah. Let's get ready to thumble, right? But he says something else, as you know, and and if you if you were to make a video saying that. Apparently he's got the rights to that, and you know if he gets to find out, you know if you have a if you make a if you make a YouTube video where it's got that in it or something like that, you know they could come and they could put even though you're being you know creative with it, they could come and put a copyright on it, and it's absolutely ridiculous. I think it really does stifle creativity because the beauty about being able for somebody to use and utilize somebody else's work. It allows them to make something better or to be more creative or take it off in a different angle and things like that. And like, where do we go with this? You know, if, if somebody like claims that they have rights to certain words and, 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 and the certain sayings and things like that, you know, we, we have to be then become very careful what we're saying and what we're doing and how we use them and things like that. It, it, it is really it is really ridiculous. It does get, or then you're gonna get into complete retro music and start listening to some uh, things yeah. from 19th century before 1920s. <laughs> yeah, because those are free and you can use them. So <laughs> uh, that's the I'm big, just trying to get get a, there, get a light. You got on, the big scoop on us tonight. Everything from now on from us is gonna look like the Scarlet Pimpernel. So I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of with a Benny Hill twist to it. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree on one mm. hand. Yes, I agree. On the other hand, as somebody who, like, with the photos, for example, uh, it, it's it's yeah. both sides of it. I, I understand what you're saying, but on the other hand, I want to be credited uh, if somebody's using it. I right, so then you approach you approach the person if you find that they're using your stuff and you say, hey, you know, you know that this is my stuff. How, you yeah. know, how about you give me credit and throw me, throw me a bone here? You know, I mean... Some people have actually been, uh, I forget who it was. I brought this up before as well. There's a rock group right now. They use this, um, I think it's Iron Maiden. I think it's Iron Maiden. If you Google it, um, Iron Maiden um, uses uses a company to find out where all the so-called illegal, illegal downloads are. And then what they do is they go and have rock, rock concerts and they're banking they're yeah, banking yeah. they're not they're not taking these kids yeah if you go to google and type that in you know who's the who's the rock uh rock group that uh is utilizing illegal downloads to do uh yeah, that's rock Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, yeah. yeah and uh you know the banking they're not taking these poor young kids 
to court and ruining their lives and taking their parents' houses off them and making them pay exorbitant amounts of cash, like laws mm -hmm. off of uh, mm -hmm. what, what they call that Metallica. group. Metallica. Yeah, yeah exactly. I hate that guy. He's, you know, what a what a scumbag. I'm sorry. Yeah. Little pint size, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, I, you know, my problem is, is when they, you know, like I did a wedding video at my, my sister's wedding and I tried to put it up so she could watch it and her and my father are dancing to daddy's little girl. And mm -hmm. if they had just monetized it, I did, it was before I even did YouTube monetize. I wouldn't have even cared, but they blocked it. I'm not even allowed to play it. So she can't see it off of YouTube. Getting it to her is a, a pain in the ass. Yes. Yes. That's a great point there. That and that's great. just background. Like that's not copyrighted. Yep. And that's <laughs> wrong because it's so big right now. YouTube, they don't, they can't even get the AI to differentiate. So yeah. everybody goes down with the bathwater, and that really sucks. I agree with you Apparently too on that it's one. Apparently, better to use uh, music without words because AI yeah. can't catch yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, technically, it, it, from that standpoint, I if if I gave you my picture and that was my picture hanging up behind you, I would have the right to take away the the monetization on this video because my picture is behind you. Yeah. Like that's not right. You're in a studio. You're you're you you have a piece of decorative artwork on your wall that yep. happened to be mine. You, yep. That's not where I get the right to do that. But that's what they're doing with sound. Yeah. Well, that's it, and that's what's kind of being played. You know, we were talking about that last night in uh, stream, and I was saying that, and I believe this for a bit. The whole problem with YouTube right now. And that I'm not a tinfoil hat guy, and I don't believe computers are going to kill us. I'm none of that stuff at this moment. <laughs> but I do believe that their AI is starting to grow away from them a little bit. And that's why we're starting to get so many glitches in YouTube. Yeah. It's not like it's smothering us or going to take over the world. But it is starting to adapt faster than what they were expecting. And the, the engineers are actually playing a lot of catch up. They know where it is. It's like tracking a deer. You know, they know the area. They know it's down by that lake somewhere, but they're not quite sure which side of the lake it's standing on. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that YouTube is trying to deal with right now. That's just my opinion on it. You know, Ray Hayden made a uh, he made a video today, and uh, he was talking about how, you know, basically fired YouTube because they don't do a very good job at. Um, you know, he should be in charge of who goes into his spam filter. I actually uh, posted, reposted his video, and I actually, but I, I, you know, I share and post that much stuff, you know, what's to do with um, hashtag I am a creator. I doubt if I'll be able to find it on my channel, but um, I actually tagged uh, YouTube, YouTube support in it and said, you know, I, we'd like an answer about this. Why are you? you know i'll see if i can find it why are you um doing this you know because at the end of the day if it's youtube right if it's youtube you youtube mm -hmm. it's your channel why aren't you in control of what you want to be in spam so in this video ray hayden mentions that uh throw everything out you know even anybody asking sub for sub or posting links or whatever you can always go and look at their channel because yeah. um you know, and if you think they're they're a spammer or a scammer or whatever, you make that decision. Yep. You know, you can make a decision whether you want to have them, you know, post links on your channel or not. And uh, it's, you know, it's it brings up some awesome. And I can't find it because I, you know, you know me, guys. I, I'm posting, I'm sharing uh, mm -hmm. tweets uh, all day long. But um, if you go to his channel, you'll find that. But I'm just wondering whether. When I did that, because I I, I want to find um, whether um, YouTube have replied to me. I I did get a reply once when something was going on, and I tagged them in it. They right. come and they and they commented. So you know, I'm I'm looking to see if they have. There are two things that you can do. First, in the community settings, there's a block link. So you you determine if you want people to. Mine's all open. Mine's okay. all open, and so is Ray Hayden's, and he's the still. The other getting... thing that you can do is you can put those people in approved users, and then it should never go to any of those. Um, either of those, it should always show up. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, that's a pain. That's a pain. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say it's not when you're dealing with you know 
all these people and all these people that are in the community and things like that. But people that are constantly putting, you know, that you know that are putting in hashtag I am a creator, you can actually approve those people to automatically be not go into those folders. Oh, I have people that don't even put hashtag I'm a creator, you know, in there that you're just saying, hey, great video. Um, I just want to let you know, I, I appreciate what you're doing, something like that. And it's in spam. I mean, why? What? What's there's wow. a lot of factors in that ai it's how fast they reply to the last video some of them open up five videos and they'll reply you know they'll let them play yeah through. i mean it's it's, yeah. it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous though they use the same message in each one of them there's so many factors that can play and that's what we're saying too last night like i'm just looking at mine i see i dropped five from last night because i had 12 25 now it's 12 20. it doesn't mean that i did anything wrong it could be also the ai doing an audit on their channels seen them as doing too many you know that mass too quickly and that yeah. and they got cut a couple so it's uh it's the one the, the channel it, youtube has grown so big they've kind of lost control of it and now they're just worried more about the monetization side to try and keep it afloat and everything else is kind of like we're all secondary you well, know it's business now yeah. i think it, more than anything it's business for them and like i like jimmy kimmel but i don't want to watch him on youtube you know <laughs> if i want to watch him there's a network that pays him multi-million dollars nothing against the guy i'm just taking him as one of many yeah that's not what you it, is for those me. are the trending videos yeah that's right that's oh, the it's it's paid a lot and put right at the forefront even if you don't like somebody like pewdiepie and i'm bringing his example well, at least though he was still a YouTuber from the beginning. And yes, he gets a promotion. I'm not knocking everything or saying he does everything right. I'm just saying what really bugs me is the ones coming now are being so pushed on our throat is the net the major network ones. Yeah. You know, it's not what YouTube was ever designed meant to be. It's it's like a parasite onto it. And then that really takes away from all of the rest of the people. I know my channels won't be in there right now. I'm not big enough. I can I can deal with that fine. But what about the big YouTubers that have been doing it for three, four, five years? They should have spot one, two, three, four, five, or whatever, not you know, all the late night talk show hosts getting every plot. Yeah. So you wanted some news, right? You wanted some good news? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we had, um, I think you guys were there when we had a couple of people that uh, went live, uh, 1,000, and we had a new creator on the live stream today uh she went she actually went over 900 so yeah i was there when i was on with you when she did it that's right um but uh yeah it's it's great that when we actually capture this you know when we capture yeah. it uh so that people can see it you know anybody that comes back and watches the videos also it's good you know if we ever want to like down i mean <laughs> download this and edit it up and and show people actually going up you know yeah. and uh their the, su the support rising it's um, absolutely fantastic definitely so that was that the, well we did our thousand ones with you yep right yeah there's been a few that we've captured it it uh it's it's a wonderful sight to see um when somebody says oh i'm only 10 away from whatever yeah. and then you can go there and you can look at the channel and you can go to social blade and then you call out to everybody that's in the chat hey if you're not already supporting you know yeah. please come and support because um in doing so um if it, you know if you do so then obviously we, we switch the social blade on and we we share that screen and then in sharing that screen you actually see the numbers roll around and and it's a very it's 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 a very awesome happy tremendous uh, mm -hmm. feeling I, I love it it makes me it makes me so happy that these people that are participating in the hashtag i am a creator uh, are actually making this work yeah. and um i love it i really do that's the magic of the channel right there when that's happening live like that i find that's where it's, it's the real essence of the i'm a creator is in full. yeah it's i love it i mean it, it's you can't get better than that um you know actually seeing that happen before your eyes because you know the doubters then they can't you know they can't really doubt you know they can still say stuff but at the end of the day guess what hey you know the proof's in the pudding as we keep saying um 
Gregor, just, how did you find out about Hi, I'm a Creator? I actually, um, online car show had put together a Instagram group message that had all kinds of people in it, car, car guys. Oh, Greg, I'm not sure if your mic bottomed out on you. You're getting a bit of a crunch when you talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing it all crackling and everything right now. Again, <laughs> hopefully that'll go away. Um, I am a uh, or, um, online car show. And let me know if my mic's messing up. It means that. Yeah, you're cutting out pretty bad. You're yeah. Right, let me restart OBS and come back in. Okay, sounds good. You got the link. You kept it. Yep. Okay. See you soon. Sorry. Uh, okay, he'll join us back in a second. In the meantime, tell us about Peter McKinnon. Yes, I want to ask. You I about. seen your tweet, but tell us did, more. Did, did, did you share? Did you share the tweet and uh, and put in the reply? Yes, I hope that Casey and Peter uh join us i hope you you can get them on the show did you do that because that's what we need to do i will do it tomorrow if the better time to do it especially for canadian uh is in the morning uh so i, I rarely share anything in the evening unless it's alive uh, uh -huh. so i will do it in the morning for sure because right, that's, that's what we need that's yeah. what we need that's what we need to do we need every single person that's part of hashtag i am a creator right i want you i would love for you to go to um my twitter and uh, let me see if I can find it. And um, I need you to, um, or should I, oh, I don't need you, but I would like you to um, go to this uh, tweet. If I, if I can find it, it's, so, it's buried. Um, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. I got it. So, uh, um, and if you would, most importantly, um, Reshare this and uh, like and comment using the um, the ads of Casey Neistat and uh, and Peter McKinnon and yeah. let's see uh, what happens. I mean, yep. I know that these guys are are very very busy, but apparently I've got word that uh, Casey Neistat is about to start something up. Yeah. Like uh, I am a creator, right? Yep. Three, six, and, eight. Yep. and to me, it uh, it just seems again like money. And why does money have to be involved? Uh, we truly have a grassroots thing here that's evolving, and mm -hmm. um, you know it's going bigger. It's growing bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. and uh, we c only us can make it. And I encourage everybody to keep using hashtag I am a creator and everything that you do when you share a video. Put a hashtag I am a creator in front of it on Twitter. Put it in the your title of your video. Put it in your about section. Put it in your tags. Every time you tweet, use hashtag I am a creator in the tweet. It doesn't have to be in the front of the tweet. It can be at the end of the tweet. And every time that you reply to somebody, say uh, yes. You know, let, let's say somebody saying something, you say yes, I agree. And then period. And then hashtag I am a creator mm -hmm. because I would love to get this tweet in. Let's you know get people wondering what is hashtag I am a creator about. There's mm -hmm. enough videos out there. We need to be creating more and more videos. And, um, you know, uh, people, I mean, I know that you need money to uh, survive on this planet, but uh, there's a lot of people that have got a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if, you can, if you can take a taxi cab or, or, or ride your um, electric skateboard, to the, you know, to a certain place and then take a lift up to the top of a building and then jump in a helicopter and fly to the airport in that, then uh, you've got money, right? Yeah. The very fact that you can live in New York City yeah. and have an apartment and a studio, yes. uh, you've got money, right? And um, if we are all about uh, helping the so-called small creator, right, which I don't like to use, I like to think that it is all of us are big creators and one day we're going to be massive creators right hashtag seven figures for everyone then um get on with it we're here casey if you want to uh, be part of this if you want to help out be a guest on my show or i'll be a guest on your show or come and join me and uh let's get the party started buddy because uh, i'm all for it right i am um, i love so it you know let's let's put casey and peter to task i mean i know i know they're busy but you can't tell me 
that they can't put 10 minutes. That's all I'm asking. 10 minutes of their day. And it doesn't have to be now. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. It doesn't have to be next week. It doesn't have to be uh, next month. But let's schedule it. 10 minutes. Come on a live stream. I can send you a link. You can be, uh, you know, in your apartment, your studio. You could be traveling. You've got a cell phone. I could send you the link. You can, you know, you could accept that link and you could come on. I hope it happens. I hope you're, you know, I hope you uh, are kind of like a man of your word about things. So uh, th there we are. And that's the reason why I made that tweet. And so um, really it's up to the hashtag I am a creator community to, to tweet this and to put, you know, will Casey and uh, Peter McKinnon take uh, James up on their offer or are they just, you know, not really interested? Mm -hmm. is, is it just about the money? That's that's what I say. And, uh, you know, today on my live stream, uh, Marky uh, Ballantyne brought up that, uh, you know, it would be amazing if James could do this seven days a week. And it would be. Mm -hmm. And uh, but obviously it takes money. Right. And if my bills are cut, bills are covered, you know, my rent, my electric, you know, my bills are covered and, you know, I don't need a lot, then then I'll do it. And I did get some donations. Um, MFN Productions. Uh, Mario, he donated um, fifteen dollars through Super Chat to me, oh, wow. and uh, I got a couple of PayPal donations, and uh, you know, so if we can make this happen, guys, you know, then I'm in. I'm in like Flynn. Hashtag I'm in like Flynn. <laughs> and, uh, You're gonna run out of space for hashtags. You know, don't forget seven fingers. I, I, Seven seven figures for everyone. Yeah, seven fingers for everyone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, let let's make it happen. So I'm not asking for a lot. There are a lot of people on in on the community, and for a Starbucks coffee a week, if you were all to chip in, and I think the best way to do it, unless you want your name up there on, um, you know, on the live stream, then I think that. A, a most affordable way to you is to do the PayPal and my PayPal is on my YouTube channel So if you want to donate if we can make this happen, I'd love it. You know, I, I, I'd love it if We can get if you can get the donations coming in and who knows if it gets that big I'll be coming and visiting you. I'll be doing a live stream uh, with you or at your house You know if, if we can make it happen imagine that I would love to get a mobile studio um, a mobile YouTube studio uh, together where we could go around and and visit uh, different cities and have people come out and be broadcasting live with us. That would be awesome if we could uh, make that happen. How and about a, starting with that chair you were saying that you need the new chair? <laughs> well, you know what? Forget the chair. I'll just lower my camera for now. As long as my bills are paid, you know, we can move on to a chair later on. <laughs> you know, but I just I just want to promote. I think that there's so many channels there that are frustrated. They have the YouTube frustration, and um, you know, if I could live stream, you know, minimum once a day for seven days a week, or even twice a day, or whatever, whatever's whatever's called on for me, so I can bring people from this community together and we can bring more and more people in and we can build this and make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because I do feel as though like my channel now has become a hub. There is so much um, activity and networking going on from it that if we can bring this in and I can carry on uh, teaching and preaching the hashtag I am a creator and what this community is all about, which I'm going to say the philosophy of hashtag I'm a creator is that we watch people's videos, we like people's videos, we hit the red support button, and we comment and we share now as well. We share on Twitter, Facebook, and we comment all that in the actual comment section of the video. So you could say, hey, great video. This is what you would type, for example. Hey, great video. Just to let you know, I watched your video, I liked your video, I shared your video, and here's my comment. Boom, just leave it at that and see what happens. You can even throw hashtag I am a creator in there if you want, and let's see what happens. So uh, now we have Greg back with us. Uh, I want to give him a chance to tell his uh, – thank you for restarting, by the way. I'm sorry yeah, for that. Was it fixed? Oh, as when you were talking about uh, the how you found out with the I am a creator movement? Yeah. Um, so Online Car Show started a um, Instagram chat 
like amongst car creators. Right. And so, you know, they were talking about live streams and St. Auto was having a live stream on a Sunday. So I wanted to check him out and I was watching him and I saw his hashtag. I am a creator in his um, uh, title. So I commented, what is hashtag I am a creator? And he directed me to James's channel and had a little bit of trouble just kind of getting into the groove and understanding it, but just kind of stuck with it. And honestly, I sit there and I, 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 I like the live streams. That's where I like meeting people. I get to interact with people. Um, I have Social Blade on one screen. I have the live yeah. stream on one screen. And usually now, I'm usually commenting and opening um, people's channels on another one because I usually, I'll, I'll, I might run it in the background a little bit to give some support, um, but I try to definitely check out their channel after I'm done with the live stream. Or if the live stream is taking a, a lull in conversation, I'll go over and I'll listen to theirs a little bit. I'll actually be listening to two at the same time and I'll like turn one down a little bit and one up a little bit and I'll yeah. pause and I'll do all kinds of things. And But I'll be re responding to my comments while there's things going on. And I have a group of car people that I kind of, deal with a uh, group of like 15 and I told all of them about it and a few of them have really embraced it and some of them question it and I'm like you know what guys look you know you want to get to a thousand you want to get monetized you want to get big you want to do all these things I'm growing you're you're not you know so that's kind of just you know embracing it and talking it and I actually I I tweeted out uh, the marathon that I was going to be on that I was on the marathon and I think that's yeah it was that one there was a guy that came in who I, he's my local nemesis but um, oh. he came in and the first thing out of it was his mouth was there are some things that people are talking about that are wrong and there are I mean some of the not everybody here is perfect and I see some things that I disagree with, and that there's nothing wrong with that. They want to follow that. I mean, I'll offer my my help in any way, but I mean, I'm here that I know that the basic concept works. And he said it again. Now, um, Demi D was in here earlier. I don't know if he's still here, but he's a, a part of that group, and he's embraced it. And every time these guys that I know come on, I shout them out. Him, I didn't shout out because he came in negative. The third time he put something up, he said, well, in the interest of being um, positive, all he did was boast about this one video that he happened to catch on his dash cam that he's got 200,000 hits on. Hmm. Um, you know, so I don't acknowledge him in these things, and he hasn't been back since, and I'm waiting to run into him because he's going he's gonna to tell me how bad this is, but yet he and I started off at the same time, and at this point I'm like 250 supporters higher than he is yeah and negativity is i mean it's been pretty good all in all so more i'll be perfectly honest way more than i ever expected i yeah. gotta say it's been pretty good the way people seem to be with each other but yeah we can't live under blinders or there has been like some cases and for myself i'm just shedding them like lizard skins you know and i'm blown off on our own and i yeah you know but it's like um, it's it's like what the fish sandwich show says in the uh, in the testimonial video that I put together. He said that uh, this is not a competition between creators. There's room for everybody. We are embracing one another. We're watching each other's videos. We're liking them. We're sharing them. You know, I mean, you've only got to look. You've only got to watch that testimonial video that uh, I put together. It's on my channel, and it's also on the hashtag I'm a creator. Uh, YouTube channel also the one that we did the marathon on yeah. and um, It's true. I mean, this is a very positive um, Community of people that are very kind a lot of creators that are very kind oh. and um, You know Kindness is is it's it's right there that that's that's part of our philosophy. That's why we watch like and share and you know, if you've got a if you've got a playlist, we add it to the playlist, and yeah. we we participate, we communicate and participate with one another, and uh, I th I think 
you know, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I think that video that I put together that's got you guys in it, it's a really great video. I mean, who would not want to be part of hashtag I'm a creator after they've seen that? No, definitely, for sure. It's worked out for a lot of us. Uh, Greg, how much has your numbers jumped since you started? About 150 in three weeks. Excellent. Uh, more than that, 100, 170 in three weeks. Well, that's that's pretty good numbers, so it's definitely paid off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's especially like right now, like I was growing pretty well last summer, but I mean, the winter time for cars is so difficult. Like, yeah. you got to keep putting videos out there because YouTube needs to see that you're still active. And, um, you know, it was a big, big push now. And it's kind of, I have a guy, another guy who, again, started out the same time as me. And I was always, I was always playing catch up to him, always playing catch up to him. And uh, actually, he was doing a lot of this in the car community where he was just interacting with other car channels. And mm -hmm. he was able to grow a little bit faster than me. I was like, always trying to catch up to him. He's actually taking a break, taking care of some family business and uh, for the past couple months. And even with him not putting out videos, he was still growing as fast as I was. I finally just blew past him with this. And, you well, know, this community has just been great all around and supportive. And, um, you know, there, there's I, I, I do see a downside to some of the newer creators that come in. I mean, one of the big things is, is that your first hundred subscribers is supposed to be hard. Um, and I see a lot of people getting a hundred subscribers just like that. Those for those, that time period is when you make all your mistakes. So at least I made all my mistakes in front of an, an empty screen. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> yes. And we all have made a lot of mistakes in that one. But I guess, you know, the tools are there and they're jumping on the bandwagon. I guess the same as we would have if we would have had the chance. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't fault them. No, no, I'm no, no, saying no, no, that no. there's a downside and that's yeah. what the downside is. To me, it's like, the, you know, I grew up, we had an apartment before you get a house and you learn how to fix things and, or a car. You know, you first get the old beaters and you learn how to touch yeah. them. These ones are kind of coming in and getting like the, they're getting a walk off of the brand new Camaro, you know, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So they don't know how to fix things when things get broke sometimes. That's a good that's a good point though. I never really thought of it that way. Yeah, I mean I have a group that kind of has a, a similar goal. Um, we call ourselves the YouTube pack, but one of the things when we developed that group, and like I said, we're a small group, we have like 15, 20 people, wow. um, was that you have to have a hundred videos and a hundred subscribers because we wanted we wanted people that knew how to how to do this right off the bat. We want, or you know, we didn't want to grow somebody. We wanted someone that would be part of the team to grow everybody, um, and we wanted somebody to stick with it. So we figured if you stuck with it long enough to do a hundred videos and a hundred subscribers, then that was a, a measurable that you would be you'd be in it for the long run. But yeah. it, it's a, it's the same goal. It's a different way to get there. See, that's like our for our channel here. That's where our live stream kind of was born out of. I, I don't know if James likes it when I use the term or not, but I kind of call it creative. Uh, I'm a creator 2.0 because everybody has a point here. Like James is kind of the glue that's held all this together. Then Verig Squad goes on and he's that driving force, you know, uh, the transport chart. All these guys are pushing hard. You know, it's a high impact session, like a recruitment, almost like a bit of a boot camp going on, you know, like a frenzy. We're like the beginning of late night television. You know, we take the guys, a lot of our guys that we interview, like you guys, are people that now a lot of us have added, the, the earlier ones we know from their videos. And now we're trying to build the relationships that we hope will last now for years by getting to know everybody. Uh, what now, like, um, we know what your videos are. We've subbed you. We're I, I was already supported you. Each other supported now tell us about what we don't know about you so we always have a good connection two years down the road. We're right. hoping that people will get to know each other well enough. They'll want to do more collaborations together. They'll want to, uh, you know, maybe take on the I'm a Creator and keep adding and make their own live channels and building on it. We had, uh, what's his name, uh, Husky Hans on the other night. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He's been in the I'm a Creator movement. I don't think and he's so. a guy who does fishing from Wisconsin. And, you know, he does it because it's his hobby, and he likes the fishing, and he's done pretty good with his channel. We get him on, 
and we find out that the guy has got he's going for his PhD. He's writing his dissertation on soil properties and being able in the new world to be able to handle oversaturated salt contents. And like, you know, all these things you find out about people that, you know, we don't know from their videos. And, yeah. and I, find, I find that so interesting. Like tonight we were talking to you, Gregory, about like, you know, more into your wedding. You know, I know you're leading up towards a wedding channel. But I think that was very interesting for people to learn more that, you know, you, you love cars, but the, the other layers to you as well. Uh, it's a talk show with it, the Maury Povich. We're not going to bring anybody out. Don't worry. There's no grandmother going to surprise this crowd tonight or anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think these are, are great. And, you know, it's great for the community. I mean, you know, my channel is not going to do well with this type of thing. Like, I could bring people onto my channel the way you do, but I can tell you that there will not be the, the same response just because the audience that I draw won't work um yeah. i do a, a a a weekly car show and it doesn't produce the the uh support that your guys channel does but you know it's great to get on in front of other channels and stuff that have that ability yes to grow, and that's kind of thing and i'll be honest with you you know it's great to to be here and people get to see me but this isn't the big benefit because when I go live, I'm not interacting as much with the chat room, and I don't see my numbers go up. But when I then come back to all of these people that are in the chat room, and I start interacting with them on the next live stream, they go, oh, I remember him from last night or the other night or whatever it is. I want to go check out his channel. Exactly. But, I mean, the way I, I, I want to share how I find this movement to work best for me. So that the people in you know maybe are are not being as successful, and they hear, oh, 170 in three weeks, man. How how did he do that? Mm. Um, the way I do it is I set I I come in and I, I go to live streams. I, I I know that the movement loves the um, the playlist, but I don't find that I I create a connection with the playlist. So. I come into these chat rooms and I talk to people and I, I'm just engaging. I just comment on everything. I just come in. And I'll be a wise ass. I, I was on uh, Vertic Squad's video today and he was telling people, you know, don't use the sub word. And I, I made a comment. I said, yeah, I wanted to start a channel about underwater boats, but I'm afraid that YouTube's going to, going to, um, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna, you know, they're gonna blackball me. I said something like that, and he's like, "Oh, underwater boats! That would be a great channel." <laughs> then he started putting it together. That would be a submarine. Oh, I think that was a joke. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll, I'll make those those wise ass comments because that's kind of me, and it's just a joke, and it's yeah. a joking manner. You know, I don't ever get vicious or or try to just say anything that would be, yeah. um, you know taken the wrong way it's more right. of a joke on that kind of thing mm -hmm. and it just gets engaging and then the way i, I follow up with that is like I'll, I'll see people that support me and i'll open up their channel they'll, they'll say i supported you and i, I kind of sit there and go now you hit the big red button because you're watching this video um because the support is to go over to that channel check out that channel watch a video and comment so i have a lot of I'm going to say it. I have a lot of subscribers from this group, and they might be watching the video and, and things like that, but they're not embracing the community. And I have a lot of people that are embracing the community. So the way I treat it is, is that if you take the time to watch my video and you take the time to make a comment, then I take the time to watch your video and make a comment. And then the people that I meet in the chat that I'm going to support and, and see and see new, I do the same thing. I watch their video, I comment on it, I let them know they're there. If they're truly part of this movement, that's my pay it forward because they're gonna go to my channel and do the same thing. And all of a sudden it's a snowball and I'm gonna be talking to the same people and those that support me and those that support me. And I'm still trying to reach out to the, everybody in the chat room and go, oh, I don't recognize this name. I don't think I'm, I'm a, a supporter of them yet. Let me go watch their video, comment on, and I just kind of assume they're going to come to mine, and then I'm going to go back to theirs and, and things like that. What's your thoughts, James? Um, I like the model that um, 
I like the model that uh, I promote, and that is basically um, I think that the hashtag I am a creator support uh, playlist is a gold mine. I think uh, I think you guys said that uh, you got a lot of your support from there, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we were actively interacting with it too. I mean, that yeah. was a steady hustle night and day for a good while, yeah. interacting, building the connections, going back and forth, liking, uh, watching, commenting, long, nice, uh, you know, interactive yeah. comments, building that back and forth connection, you know, uh, and that was took quite a while, but yeah. I, that's why you need to work on it, you know? Yeah, nobody nobody said that this um, hashtag I am a creator community thing was going to be easy, and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. obviously the more and more people that get involved in this obviously uh people can get uh, a lot of watch time especially when people start to hone in on on uh, certain certain creativity and of course we're going to have that but uh that's why right off the bat i started mentioning about the playlist the playlist is a gold mine um and i encouraged everybody to have a playlist and to and to uh, share that playlist and add people to the playlist and when somebody comes to my channel and they are supporting me and they you know they say wow i just found out about you somebody sent me here or whatever wherever the comment is i watch this live stream i'll go and check to see if i'm supporting them and if i'm not you know my comment is always somewhere on the lines of like hey i saw your comment on my one of my youtube videos i'm just going to let you know that i've added your um, video to the hashtag i'm a creator support playlist uh, I liked your video. I shared your video. And of course, by adding it to the playlist, the hashtag I am a creator playlist, uh, if I had my likes uh, turned on where it goes to uh, uh, Twitter, it would also show up on there also. But I don't because, you know, the stuff that I probably watch that is not part of hashtag I am a creator who has, you know, thousands of channels. And it's not me being selective. It's just, just the way that i am i'm i'm marketing this so i if i add somebody to the playlist i want that to go to the playlist to show that i added that to the playlist so you'll see that on twitter and then you'll also see that i tweeted it out on twitter because i i I do that too and that's in my that's in my comment Mm -hmm. and that i let them know that i have a twitter account it can be found on my youtube channel and uh, come and find us because all you have to do is type in the search on Twitter, hashtag I'm a creator, and you'll find everybody on Twitter that's part of hashtag I'm a creator. And therefore, you can follow those people and you can tweet to them saying, uh, hey, I, I, I'm following you now. Uh, can you follow back? Hashtag I'm a creator. And then basically, you know, you get a response from that also. Yeah. But I think that anybody that's just new to this, and they want to see more or less instant results because taking part in the live streams is fantastic. It's instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Uh, my worry with that is that we are having people that are complaining, well, I got, uh, you know, I, I went up 100 and now I've just lost 10 supporters. Yep. I, w- I was over 900. Well, you know, that's probably because when you know all those people that you supported in the chat, mm-hmm. you didn't leave the tabs open. And I know I know some people are doing this on smartphones and it doesn't give you yes. that opportunity. But what you should do, if that's the case, is you should uh, either try and remember who you supported or you should have a pen and piece of paper and you should write the um, write the channels down. And in doing so, what you should do then is you should go and at least watch one of their videos and yeah. play it in full mm-hmm. and like it and leave a comment saying, hey, I, I came here because uh, I found you on James's live stream or I found you on Pusa Studios live stream or wherever you found them. I watched your video. I liked it. Here's a comment. I shared you on Twitter, yada, 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 right? And boom, don't even, you know, don't even ask them if they're not supporting you to come and support you back. The beauty about the playlist, the beauty about the playlist, why that works so well and why those supporters stick is because you are paying it forward, right? You're paying it forward. So you play, you set the playlist going, you go to the hashtag I am a creative support playlist. You set the playlist going, you watch the videos, you're doing it. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing on YouTube. You watch it, right? And if you're a very fast typer, guess what? You can do it. But there's some videos that are probably only a minute or two minutes long. And, you know, I can't always gather my thoughts when I want to write, especially something. So 
you know, you may want to halfway through pause that video, get your comment composed, do what you're going to do in that uh, comment that you watched, you liked it, you put it on Facebook, you put it on Instagram, uh, you shared it on Google Plus, you, you added it to um, uh, Reddit, you know, to the uh, I am a creator subreddit, right? Whatever, you did all this stuff, right? And then set the uh, video playing again. And when you set the video playing again, boom, hit that, you know, comment and just watch the video out and then move on to the next one. Now, some people were saying, well, I like this, but now it's so huge, this playlist, yada, yada, yada. That's okay. I believe there's a shuffle feature on it. You don't have to watch it in order. Or you could go and you could start watching the videos, create your own playlist and watch them back to front, mm -hmm. the videos. And add them to your playlist as, as, as you do it, right? And then, therefore, you've got them on, on your playlist. There are so many things that if we get really creative with this and do such creative things that, you know, it's a win. It's still a win-win situation for everybody. But I think the playlist is awesome because they're all numbered, you know. And you, even if it comes to a time where you've done two hours, three hours, I know that um, – M trunk 85, I think it is. He'd practically give all hope up, all hope. And then somebody recommended him to me. And he said that he came and he sat from six o'clock when he got in from work and right through till gone midnight watching the videos and commenting them on the playlist. And boom, his channel took off like wildfire. And what's so beautiful about the playlist is it's not just that creator, right? It is not just that creator that is going to come back to you. Everybody that sees that awesome comment that is so um, not so much seen on YouTube, right? Yeah. That you, you, you're putting everything out there, what you did, all your actions, you watched, you liked, you shared, you're supporting them. You hit the red support button and you know, here now is your, your comment. When other people see that, they go, wow, look at this comment. It's amazing. So they come and they visit your channel too. And uh -huh. so I just think that the playlist is still a gold mine. I think that the um I think that these live streams are awesome too. I really do. I think it's great. It shows that we're networking and there's definitely connections. But please, guys, if you are doing that, because this is not sub for sub, if you are doing that in the uh, chat. <laughs> Just make sure that you go back and watch everybody that you supported, watch all their videos and leave a nice comment and a like and, and share their videos because that's the philosophy of hashtag I'm a creator. Perfect. Yeah, this is a great, and these are all great ideas. And it's, it's honestly, to me, it's all tools. They work together. One side, one that I use, it's not always connected. Of course, it's connected with I'm a creator. It's not. Is uh, I'll go to somebody. I'm going to look in the channel here. Um, I'm going to take somebody random. Seven, uh, seven blessings. We're going to use them. I know they have a good channel. I know they have good followers. So every once in a while when I go to one of their channels, I'll literally look down and see what their supporters like. It's a bit easier for us because we're a general channel, so I can appeal to different audiences. But even if you're a, like a car guy like Gregory, I still believe there's lots of people in other channels that still want to watch about cars. It's good to have your core, but it's, there's lots of people that can overlap. And I'll literally sometimes go down through and start going and checking out supporters in their list, which they'll then eventually find out about I'm a creator because we're part of it. And I'll start asking them, like, you know, I just found your channel on Seven Blessings because uh, we're uh, fans of them, so I thought I would check you out. And I've actually got some really good supporters from there as well, and I know they, they then will feed over usually coming to our streams and that they'll find out about I'm a creator and join it as well. So that's another place that I go look and kind of another resource. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, and you know, I I, I kind of don't think about the. Uh, I did spend some time in the live in the um, playlist early on uh, to try and find out what things were and stuff like that. But I really, the thing that I got with me with the playlist is is when you start from the beginning, it's almost repetition. Everybody's talking about the same thing. I really like the idea of shuffling. I think I'm gonna go back and go through it again, but shuffle it. Yeah, um, that's those, that's what I do too because those early videos were were very very similar. I remember. Yeah, and it's just I've gone through a lot of them already, so instead, you know, it's a lot easier to shuffle them, and I'm looking for new ones that we haven't connected with yet. So that's something. Well, the um the reason why it was set up like that was because right from the very 
beginning when I made the um, the uh, 1,000, 4,000 video. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to give um, support back to yeah. everybody that made such a nice, fantastic, awesome comment and they'll watch that video and add constructive criticism. So that's basically where it actually, you know, in it, it, where it actually grew from, right? So I, I went right back to the very first comment, you know, the very first person that, um, you know, and that's who's the, the you know, one of the first um, people there. And that's how I built the yeah. uh, the playlist, right? That's how I did it. And as more and more people came and to my channel and were saying, yada, 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 then I would go and visit their channels and I would leave them a comment and I'd let them know in that comment, I've added you to the playlist, right? Yeah. And it, that's how it's been built. But yeah, you can shuffle it. Okay. I understand what I understand what um, Greg is saying that you know it's a lot of the same thing repeating over and over again. That's fine, but you've got to understand that without the support of the beginning people on that playlist, this probably would not have existed. Don't forget no, the I, I, I understand why these people were here right from the beginning. And that's why I won't change the playlist when people say, hey, is there any chance now that you could you could put people at the top of the playlist, shuffle it around? And I don't think that that would be right because we have people like Points and Pixie and and various other people that are on that playlist that uh there's even a person on that playlist that has a problem with me, has me blocked on Twitter, but you know what? They're still on that playlist right at the very beginning. That's, that's and so I don't hold a grudge. I just, you know, I wish that uh, you know, they would let their, um, you know, their negativity and their their uh, envy, their jealousy, you know, be set aside and just get on with this if they still want to carry on participating in this. And that's the probably the pe person that's going around and putting the thumbs down, which I don't mind. I don't care on all the hashtag I'm going create a live streams. It was probably one of them. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just surmising. I mean, I always thank my haters. It's interaction. Yeah, that's right. And it's not all rosy. I mean, everybody's got to have different opinions. That's part of a community. And it's, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. But it's like we're not chewing each other or wishing the worst on them. It's just a difference of opinion. I'm glad with the, I'm even though I shuffle the playlist, I am glad that what James said about it, no, I'm not like, we were very early on in the playlist, and I'm quite proud of that because we jumped on early just by chance or fluke. Do you know where your video is? What number? Number six. Your number six. The windmill train, I can tell you, I don't even have to go look for it. Yeah, and that's when we still had our 42 subscribers. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, back then we were high, I think we were up to maybe 60 or so. We had yeah. jumped already from the yeah. Hey, I um, I want to address uh, seven blessings in the chat. Uh, she's saying that most people don't watch their videos, they watch the previews because they're 30 seconds or less. And you know, I, I just went to your channel to uh, kind of look at your video stream and how, I'm, I'm looking at your how you do your previews you know i think that maybe after you that next week maybe uh make those unlisted so you don't lose the views but they're not part of your stream anymore or your videos you know your, your the ones that people can see so all you have is your next week video or your next week on Ble seven blessings and uh you won't have all those keep going so there will only be one because I know when I go to it, I try to watch the last video. What I what I really do is I look at the the last few and I try to pick one that would be most interesting to me. But if I if I don't see if none of them as a whole are really a topic that I'm really interested in, I'll pick the most recent to get an idea of what a channel's about. Um, yeah. So that see, might be just, something to consider is unlit turning those previews to unlisted. See, that's for us because uh, our live streams, for every one of them, we always put out a preview video in the day. And yes, usually, guys, as a side note, if you're putting out a video every day, you should never put them within 24 hours of each other. Mm -hmm. So we wait to make sure the live stream from the night is winded down. Usually, I try to put up at noon, but sometimes you'll notice I put them up at 3 or 4. It's because the other one is still doing decently well. And right before we go online, that's exactly what I'm always doing is I'm going in and I'm unlisting the preview video once we're ready for the new live stream. So we do that on a daily basis for that exact reason. And also the other thing is lots of people forget to customize their front page on their yes. channel. Like yes. when you go on the channel, oftentimes there is like 
nothing there and you're going to look for videos or there is one video of what they liked somebody somewhere like it doesn't represent a channel there are two ways of viewing it one as a new subscriber and you can see it yourself and one as a returning one and you can customize those views so if there are certain yeah. videos that you want to be in the forefront you want to get those views on those videos put them on that page you can customize it by playlists by videos by views there's a whole bunch of ways and you can go on youtube that. there's hundreds of videos to show you how to do it step by step and please, people, make custom thumbnails. Never use the ones generated by YouTube. Yeah. Take that extra 20 minutes, hour, if it takes you, whatever. Make custom high res. It has to be under two megs, but it's well worth it. That's your business card for that video. Everybody will judge your video. Whether they're going to click on it to look at it or not is by that thumbnail. Enhance it. We did a video on that on our Tech Talk, uh, was it a week ago? Two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. You can't, if anybody's ever flown before you know or and know about that, the food you eat up in the air and the wine you drink has usually been modified for your taste buds at high altitudes. Same with your thumbnails. It's not going to be like the picture behind me on the wall. That's big. Everybody's going to see it. Use lots of contrast and lots of bright color into it. That is your billboard. That tells people this is worth clicking onto. They'll see that long before they see what you wrote underneath. So yeah, unlist your. I'm just on your channel now. Un, go right now and unlist all of the videos that you have as previews. Yeah. Because obviously, when I go on there and I want to just watch something as a new subscriber or whatever, just for the sake of watching, I'm gonna click on the shortest one, right? So I, I just, I'm just looking right now on all your playlists. Just go now and unlist them. <clears throat> That's gonna make a ton of difference. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As you say, uh, we <clears throat> we do that too. It takes time, but we do it and the, exactly. Oh yeah, and what I was saying about thumbnails stuff is not all geared towards you. No, no, we were just talking in yeah, general yeah, they to have everybody. Nice thumbnails and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think the yeah. unlisting is gonna make a difference because I can see it. It's just like a, it's like ju junking up your yeah. uh, your page, yeah. right? So obviously, people are gearing towards that. Plus, it's blue, so people like that too. So uh, yeah, just unlist it, and. Report back in a week. I think yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I, 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 you know, because you guys got great content, and we're all doing stuff. I've modified my channel so many times, I don't even know where to start. I've driven myself crazy. I've made all the new titles, went through them, and said two hours later, this is not worth You know, you have a vision in your head, and go back and do it a second time. I, it is a growing process. It's like a garden. You don't just throw the seeds in the ground. It's a lot, a lot of maintaining with it. But... Your message is worth it. Your videos are worth it. You put a lot of work into them. So, and once again, this is for anybody out there. Put it needs that work. You can do it. Any last thoughts on uh, channels or I'm creator or your own channels? I want to put a um, I want to put a challenge out there. I, I I just challenged you guys with it on Twitter. I so, am. Uh, I already answered. <laughs> right? Did you did you post it though on your own channel? Yes, I did. Okay, so you made a tweet saying, um, basically, the idea behind it is we, we've got to try and get uh, hashtag I am a creator trending, right? So in 10 words or less and using the hashtag I am a creator, uh, like, for an example, you would say, like, um, like Pusa did, uh, Pusha, sorry. That's all said, good. Huh? It's good. You're right. You can um, it, but it's okay. Let me go to to the channel. They said that. Um, so they said, uh, "I am a creator." Is a growing network of creators becoming a family, right? So, the the um, the challenge is right using hashtag I am a creator. I want you to tweet hashtag I am a creator, and in ten words, what it means to you. Right. So the the challenge is in less than ten words, what does hashtag I am a creator mean to you? And put that on your Twitter. Let everybody know. Hashtag I am a creator means to me, you know, for example, love and support for all creators on YouTube. Right. So just put that on your uh, YouTube. It's it's a challenge, and uh, there's a few people that have done it now. But if we can get more and more people. Uh, doing this and then if people start 
searching for hashtag I'm a creator and see these tweets, we can then all start replying to one another as well. And in the reply, we can use uh, hashtag I'm a creator too. We can get some chat going mm -hmm. because it won't take a lot to get this trending on Twitter. I mean, I've seen I've seen trends on Twitter with like just 2,000 tweets. Yeah. So if we can get more of the community using uh, hashtag I'm a creator, you know, we can get this trending quite easily. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I'm just answering. Like right now, there's 1,918 tweets with Vince Staples Jeez. in it. You know. Okay. Well, we got to beat that then. Come on, guys. For the love <laughs> of God, let's get this thing trending. <laughs> we yeah. can't have that going on. I think is the main thing is uh, to grow the network of people that does it, expand it beyond like the core people that usually does it. Because uh, although like you, for example, tweet it like every 10 minutes almost sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> which is good in a way, we need more different people doing it. And, right. and, and it makes a more difference if there is wide variety of people uh, using the same hashtag. Right. So every time that you use a uh, that you share somebody's video, right, it may not even be hashtag I am a creator. Just just put hashtag I am a creator, you know, in the tweet with the link to the video and whatever wording you want to do. Anytime somebody tags you in something and you reply to them. Put uh, after you've given them the reply. Put hashtag I am a creator. Every time you retweet something, right in the box at the top, put hashtag I am a creator in there, right. Mm -hmm. And if we keep doing this, and if we're doing this on a daily basis, and we're building it up, we'll get it trending, and uh, it'll it'll bring in more people because people are going to be curious about what it's about, you know. And if anybody's got a YouTube channel and they want to share the um, share the video that I edited up with all the testimonials in, that's you know that's got Pusa Studios in it, that's got the fish sandwich, it's got Miss Kathy, you know, it's got a lot of people in it with testimonials, it's got Angel Dominique in it. Share that, you know, <laughs> let people know, hey, there's a there's a growing community on YouTube that really cares about you and your YouTube channel and will help you grow and also help others grow. Want to know what it's about? Hashtag I'm a creator and put the link to the, uh, to the video there. Mm -hmm. Right. The, you know, and then if people uh, just have a conversation with people about hashtag I'm a creator, let them know, just keep tweeting it out. Gregory. Use it in all, use it in all your tweets, all your replies, all your retweets, you know, everything, all your shares and let's get, let's get it trending. Let's get this, massive we we can do it there's enough of us now i mean if you go on youtube right now and you type in hashtag i am a creator in the search look at how many videos come up look well, at how many just one one uh, thing I, I remember last time when i was telling about the statistics there was uh, just five thousand uh, k uh, exposure well now it's almost 10 so there you go yeah gregory any thoughts yeah i have uh two tips that are separate from I am a creator, but one is to make sure that all of your social media, when you're putting out your videos, make sure you're putting them out public mm -hmm. and make sure that in your description or in your about, your bio, whatever you want to call it, that you have a link to your YouTube channel because there's a lot of times where, you know, seven blessings, I, I don't know your name, but if I was friends with you on Facebook and we were talking in a group on Facebook, I can't get to your your page. I do that all the time with Facebook, especially people don't have a link to their channel. Yeah. But I want to show something here, uh, right up above here. This little thing, if you go to your channel yeah. and you put this behind it, I'm going to show you what comes up. Um, this is a great tip. Gregory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is what's going to come up. It's going to say confirm channel subscription. And if people hit subscribe, they're automatically going to be a subscriber to you. So this is a tip that's not part of the support community. This is just the general, you know, the average person that finds your channel kind of thing that doesn't know what I am a creator in. And it's going to automatically get somebody to say, yeah, I'm going to subscribe. So that that's something you can do. And like I said, this well, is, you well, this I, did, I missed the channel. first bit. What did you do? The first bit. Okay, so you go to your, your channel page. So like right. mine is youtube.com slash C 
slash Gregory, Gregory Salvatore, uh -huh. and then you put this right behind it. Okay. And that takes you right to the subscription confirmation. Okay. Awesome. Now, the other thing that I do is GregorySalvatore.com is my business website. So I made a sub website that says sub dot gregory salvatore dot com and that's on my business cards and it redirects to that site that i just gave you mm -hmm. so if you're like i did it because if, if i didn't have a photography business i would have bought gregory salvatore dot com for ten dollars a year and redirect it to this that i just showed you and then when you're handing out your business card with a website they can go to from my instance gregory salvatore.com would take them right there so sevenblessings.com could take you directly to hit subscribe and join your channel as a subscriber that's, yeah that's a really cool that's a good point that you brought that up that's really cool yeah see seven blessings cool exactly i agree very cool well, well, I think yeah, uh, we're gonna. We've been three hours, I think. Lots we, of really useful yeah, information. Yeah, it has been tips uh, and tricks. A little bit of Tech Tuesday again. We're taking the kids out tomorrow morning, and I'm like she was saying about our daughter at the beginning. If you're not up by five thirty-six, she's pulling your eyes open like this. So. Oh, <laughs> but, I'm not even back on there. I forgot the screen. But it was <laughs> yeah, amazing. Like though. Go, we man. started uh, with just a little chit chat and yep. weddings and cars and. Friday yes. night's kind of uh, mm -hmm. that night, you know, where it's. It's kind of hard to know what to do with it, and this is exactly what I like to do with it, is just have everybody on, get different tips, opinions. Uh, you heard a lot about Gregory and his new channel. Don't forget to keep an eye out for it. Yeah, I posted yep. the link a couple of times, yep. so Weddings 101, go and check it. And, and we're wishing subscribe. you a ton of success with it, Gregory, and I hope you'll come back on again. Yeah, absolutely. This has been a lot of fun and a lot and a lot of great tips too. Thank you for the tips on OBS. I, that I really appreciate it. There's something sure. you should do in the near future. Make a good video about using OBS. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? You're not the first person to ask me about that. Yeah, <laughs> so, there you go. Well, there you go. So now there's another one in the votes. So. <laughs> and James, thank you so much for joining us tonight, sir. Oh, um, it was a pleasure. Uh, it's been a while since as, we had. As, as always, you know. We need to. Uh, it's not been a while. You're on my channel today. Oh, yeah, you mean be, you've been on your channel? Yeah. As not often as just me without Xenia or Xenia without me. We're kind I of know. A, we're a package deal. I know. But it's it's always awesome. You know that, Andrew, to uh, connect with you and Xenia. It's uh, you. you know it's 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 so great to have uh, you know internet friends such as you guys and everybody else that gets involved in these live streams and can help. You know with it it's yep. it, it really is absolutely fantastic it, it truly is it's i would have never thought that this type of community would come together um with youtube but i'm so glad that it has it's oh. our paths are definitely intertwined you know and that's a good thing like that's why i like this now that we look to the list and, and especially you're like the number one person for that i mean we got a real bond it's not just uh oh i liked your video I mean, we're knowing more about each other now and stuff like that. We've worked together. We've helped, you know, make something happen. Yeah. And, uh, that's a pretty great thing. It really is. For us, for myself, somebody who had lost all hope with 42 subscribers in February, given up on the channel. Yeah. Because the train ones that I put up that people liked at the end, the one, those ones, that was sitting there since the fall. Yeah, you gave up hope. Mill Hill Mudmose gave up hope. M Trunk gave up hope. There was a bunch of people that gave up hope, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, a lot of them like said, like you know, they were pointing in my direction. Go and listen to what this guy's saying, and they came, and you know, yeah. they took my advice and they did what I w was saying, and boom, yeah. you know, the channels exploded. I mean, yeah. yourself, you were at, what forty three? Yeah, forty two. Yeah. 42 and yep. then two months boom where you at now 12 20 tonight 12 20 amazing yeah. amazing isn't it it's That's, a lot of work it's, it's a lot of work and kudos to you but you know you've done yep what the what the hashtag i am a creator is all about that is get involved in the playlist watch the videos and and do the philosophy watch like share you know support and let the creator know that you did all that and then uh, you're taking part in the live streams, and I encourage you guys to do the live streams. And now your live live stream gods and goddess. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and, uh, uh, I don't know about that, but thank I, you. I don't know. You guys are doing an awesome job. I, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to come and, uh, and, and, uh, sit and watch you guys and to be on your show and same with other people. We had, uh, what is it? The Halo Heathens and Halos and yeah. Heathens on the other night. And they were saying how comfortable we look. And I said, if you could only see us before we press the, the, the green button, yeah. it looks like a scene out of Armageddon every night. You, know? <laughs> you, know? you guys you guys told me that basically in that first live stream when you came on, you were squeezing each other's hands so hard. Yeah, yeah. We still sometimes do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why you can't see past this level yeah. because that's where the squeezing does. comes yeah. <laughs> Like tonight, yeah. we went to start. We literally hit the button and the camera went flying. Yeah, <laughs> and I was trying to put it on, and then it screwed off, and that's how we had to play the music twice because the camera wasn't on. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know what they used to call themselves for uh, Saturday Night Live? Not ready for prime time. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've seen it. Everything yeah. was flying. It's like but okay, we're ready. <laughs> but that's what makes it fun, you know, the live, you know, because you can't. You, you, there's once people see it, it's live, you know, and if you can't laugh at yourself, then you well, can't yeah. take, you know, people laughing at you. So you've got to be able to laugh at yourself and you've got to be funny. And we might, you know, what we do here on a live and we're just learning as we go. But I really honestly believe one thing is people respect that we do have integrity because we are what we are. And I think that comes through to the, the people watching. Yeah. I, I, I really think of that's one thing we generally give to everybody is generally. Yeah. Everybody. And, uh, I've said, and I did it with Miss Kathy, if you remember, I'm no shrinking violet. Uh, bring it on. If you've got any questions or concerns about anything, mm -hmm. I'll have you on a live stream and we'll oh. talk about it. We'll talk about it face to face and we'll discuss what you think that this is and what, what you think's happening and yada, yada, yada. And if you've got problems with me or the hashtag I am a creator community or the philosophy, uh, you know, I'm your go to man or. Uh, You'll never you be out long enough for me to grieve all my differences with you, James. <laughs> oh my god no we have our own way of doing it but it doesn't mean we're not part of the community I right we just i don't if we're all doing it the same way people are going to get fed up with it that's it in a nutshell we can't right. be carbon copies of each other people are just going to say you know what i'm tired I've heard it. I've done it. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. true. You know, imagine if every TV show in the fall. Absolutely. I'm glad that's why you guys are mixing it up. And I'm yeah. basically the I'm the guy that keeps pushing it. And yeah, but I, I've been bringing people on, you know, um, um, to, um, you know, talk about them and their channels and let them review their own channel and give them, give them a platform so they can yeah. grow. Like the girl that was on today, you know, yeah, her channel yeah. grew and, you know, th that's that's what I'm going to do. But, you, you know, I do sound like a broken record when I'm doing it. And, you know, some people are going to say, oh, I don't need to keep tuning into this. James is just keep saying the same old thing and same old thing. Well, you know what? James might be saying the same old thing and same old thing. And not to be, uh, I'm not being nasty, but I do see people when, when they're sharing, they're not using hashtag I am a creator. Yeah. There's certain things that they could be doing to help mm -hmm. bring in more people into this community. Right. Yeah. And um, if we if we could just get into that and keep doing it, it, you know, like I said on Twitter, on replies and all that stuff, put hashtag I'm a creator and everything. Let's 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 let the world know and let's take it by storm what we've got going here because there are I believe that there are enough of us now that we can bring a lot more people in, a lot more people in than what we are doing and like i said earlier today on my own live stream if i was doing this you know uh, seven days a week two live streams a day this thing would be a lot bigger than what it is now because i'd be able to broadcast in the morning and i'd be able to broadcast later on i'd be able to broadcast at certain days and catch you know people at certain times like when i broadcast at three o'clock when i do the live streams at three o'clock over in the uk and further you know yeah. east from that you know, some of these people are about getting ready to get ready, you know, to go to bed type of thing. You know, mm -hmm. they're just coming from work or whatever. So it would give it a um, a broader spectrum by trying broadcasting at different different times. And some people have actually said that, you know, oh, you know, I just I just got home from work and now your broadcast is ending and I want it to be mm -hmm. part of the live stream. I could never. I can, I can never catch this. Yeah. So 
it would pay to to uh, to mix it up for me to come on earlier like I did today. I came on earlier because I want to take the dogs, and that helped out some people. Yeah. And, and come on later. I was thinking about doing a uh, a midnight hour show tonight, burning the midnight hour hour with uh, James Cox. They usually are on either while I'm at work or right as I'm about to go to bed. <laughs> Well, well, you're on the East Coast, but people yeah. on the West Coast would probably no, tune into it. And the people in like Hawaii and and further, you know, over in the Pacific Islands and 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 to Australia, if I'm doing it at midnight, they're gonna they're gonna tune in and New Zealand and and all those people, yeah. especially if I'm going like from twelve till till two o'clock. My my idea of this is to capture the world and to let the world know that we have a community here with people that are positive positive people right yeah. that truly support uh one another that have love and we're building relationships yeah. with one another and we've got nothing but kindness for one another mm -hmm. you know if somebody tags somebody you know if i was to tag you know pusa studios and and, and others saying hey you know, this video is not doing really well. If I was to tag them on Twitter, you know, could you guys tweet it out on your own Twitters? They'd do it. Why yeah. wouldn't they do it? They'd do it because they know that if they wanted me to do something or uh, the community to do it, that we would do it. We would take that video link and we would share it. Yeah. Sounds yeah. amazing. We got we got the kids uh, in the morning. <laughs> we got a shot. We thank you for three very much hours. for coming over. Are you are you planning to do the midnight? Can we announce it officially? Um yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. Okay. Let me uh, let me set it up once I get off here and I'll uh, I'll send you the link and then uh, you can um you can uh we'll tweet, it out, tweet it out as well. Yeah, we'll get it tweeted out, we'll bring some people in, all right. Sounds good. So uh, that would be actually cool. I'm sure the West Coast guys, especially, are really going to appreciate that one. Of course, so. I need to get a drink of water or something because my throat now is closing up. I've been stronger. Yeah, I've been fasting. No, I'm fasting and I've stopped drinking wine. I mean, the Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah, Kool Aid. Yeah. The, the, the Hell to Skelter Kool Aid that we have to drink. That's like saying <laughs> sub. We, we, we took a night off tonight. We're not. We're not. Um, uh, we're not wearing black. We're not uh, cult leaders tonight. Well, I'm dark color, but now yeah, I'm not black. So no, I'm right now. Normal, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I've got this bright shirt on. Guys, thank you so much for coming tonight. Eh? Thank you. I really thank appreciate you. it. And thank you all the hashtag I am a creative community. And this was loose tonight, but we are meeting probably. We'll try to do it this weekend at some point and talk about getting everything set up for next week for that half hour thing, which we said we'll also put on the I'm a creator YouTube site as well. Okay. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds good. Perfect. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. Maybe tomorrow or whatever when you get you can talk in a private. Um, yeah, uh, we, we got the kids in the morning. We got something planned, but yeah, I'll talk just to you the yeah, app. just just tweet at me. Well, whatever time's good for you, and hopefully we can get together. Okay, perfect. Because we got to get that going. So yeah, have a good night, James. Have a good night, guys. Yes. Thank good you, night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Greg, thank you so much for coming tonight. I really appreciate it for your time. We'll try to have another official. This was open mic, but we'll have another official one with you sometime if you want. Yeah, we'd yeah, like to know good. more about you after, like your behind yeah. story, yeah. behind all your professional. You didn't ventures. get the girling tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> the next time we're going back, we don't end the stream till you cry. That's our motto. Oh right no! Here. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you know we'll do that, and I'll um, I'll bring up Lightroom and have uh, some pictures up, and I can share some of that too. That would be awesome. We'd that I would like. Yeah. That. <laughs> thank you so much tonight for jumping on and that i know it was a real pleasure to have you well, and you. Uh, we'll get in touch uh soon and we'll work something out for another time okay yeah sounds good thanks okay. so much you have a good thank night you. now good night. night bye well guys that was really fun i stuck it out to the end yeah uh, i terrell realized i put her as moderator yeah oh, my god almighty that's I, fine. I, I didn't even realize before we hadn't. Uh, you're here more than we are. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Seven blessings. Custom yeah. hearts. Uh, just stuck till the end. Uh, and there's a few more other ones uh, that are hiding behind the chat as well. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much. It's been a long, long <laughs> live stream, but it was nice. Informative. Uh, I mean, and it was nice to. Uh, 
I mean, I like what Gregory Star like that. And please, guys, in the future, when we have these open mic nights, jump on. You already got a laptop, you got a tablet or whatever. You're already set up with camera and everything. Don't be shy. We were we were terrified to go in James, and uh, it's not so bad. After a minute, you forget that you're even talking to uh, to a camera. It's just like sitting around a table. And we'd love to have you. I want to hear lots about you guys. So uh, thank you so much for joining in tonight. Uh, it's been fantastic. So once again, anything else to add, on? Tune in tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be a great show. And Sunday. And Sunday. We're going to do Sunday this week? Well, the family show is moving to Sunday. Oh, okay. the, the latest news, the family show that I was announcing all week is moving on to Sunday. Right. Uh, Andrew doesn't know it yet. No, so there you go. <laughs> so uh, the show that was planned for tomorrow, the family-friendly show, it's yep. on Sunday now. There you go. And Monday, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to have Manic Monday. Do we still are doing tomorrow then? I, uh, A quick question. Are we still going to do tomorrow? We're at this point, Sunday? I'd say yes. Okay. Yeah. Stick around and tune in at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> have a good night, guys. Keep on keep creating.